In a show of solidarity earlier today, he and Dan Dunn split a bottle of non-Russian vodka. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The choice to get on. Mandate to get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. I just saw the numbers, and they went up last week, thanks to you guys. Good day, Gina Grad. Good day to you. And Bald Brian. If I go crazy, then will you still call me super gay? gay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So much to talk about. Uh, trip on the road, mm. KC, and coming back. and uh, Sound baths. Sound mm. baths and uh, trials. First and bath you've taken. <laughs> and technically, yeah, true. technically, it's a bath. Well, I got a lot to say about that. First, I'll, I'll tell you about uh, today. Today, this morning. Um, so I was uh, on the road and um, over the weekend, I got the text from Lynette saying, uh, can you take Natalia in to, to get the, um, oh God, the MRI Uh-oh. Or, or whatever it is. She got, she bonked her head. She's okay. During but volleyball? She's been having, no, nah, I think she was just. Playing what uh, we used to call grab ass. Oh, see, sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, can't really. I don't. Kids can't. There's no smear the queer and there's no, no. playing grab ass no. anymore. I ever feel like every coach I ever had accused me of playing grab ass at some point. <laughs> Are you guys playing grab ass over there? Not only that. Are but... you done playing grab? <laughs> yes, we're quite finished. <laughs> yes. You know the uh, famous Stanford versus uh, Cal. You know the play at the end with the fucking twenty laterals, bands mm. on the field. Right. John Elway senior year, et cetera, et cetera. The, I, I've seen lots of stuff about that. And at one point, they interviewed the coach of Cal many years after the fact, and he he said inexplicably he he explained it like oh we used to end every practice by playing a game we called grabas mm-hmm. and like you played grabas it's like yeah we just just tossing the ball around it's like you played grabas yeah well, well, that's how be... he explained it. Chris could probably find it on NFL films or some shit you have to be a little bit of proud in Italia then if it was from roughhousing yeah or whatever i i i wasn't there but uh i had i was tasked with taking her to Arcadia, California, which is a little deeper than Pasadena. Mm-hmm. Quite a quite a few clicks past Pasadena. Where the horse tri- uh, the horse races are. Yeah. Well, you don't hear about the horses dying anymore. I no. guess COVID and Russia <laughs> took, care of that. took care of yeah. that. Problem solved. So uh, I said, uh, yeah, t- yeah, okay, I, I, I can do that. And then I, I got back to L.A. and I was informed the day before that... Um, as Matt told me, uh, you remember that Megan Kelly thing you were going to do on Zoom that we didn't do two mm. weeks ago, but we rescheduled? Well, that's Tuesday. Oh, that's Tuesday morning. So I thought, OK, what what time is that? And uh, well, the Zoom's going to start at nine forty five. And the uh, MRI thing is at is at um, eight thirty in the morning. Ew. And it's in Arcadia, but I don't know how long it's going to take. So I talked to Olga and I said, uh, hey, listen. I was going to um, say, you guys have a rich history of not attending your children's yeah. hospital. I know. Days. Or Olga, can you please jump on with Megan Kelly? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's what I talked to her. Yeah, about. I figured. I said, Did uh, you really know the story? <laughs> I can get up. I can get out there. I can sign all the paperwork and hang out for... 45 minutes, but if it takes longer than that, then I'll split, then you show up, and Mm -hmm. you pick up Natalia, you take her home. So um, then I walked up to the desk, and I was like, how long does this uh, MRI thing take? And uh, the woman said, oh, that's that's not what you're doing today, Mm -hmm. which always... uh, in in the in the world in the day of computers and phones and text, I thought this was all going to go away. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. We had a higher batting average with with information when people were writing stuff on bark with a stick that yeah. they got well, from the fire. Dude, you wrote something down back then, you fucking meant it. Right. You so, don't want to shit to stay. So this isn't an MRI thing. This is just an evaluation for an MRI thing, which is like, oh, okay. So now it's has like... Has done in person? I have... I, I, yes. So <laughs> now it's like I'm sitting there and I'm a humanitarian. <laughs> Olga lives in like Sherman Oaks. Arcadia is not an easy commute Mm -mm. at, you know, nine in the morning from Sherman Oaks. And I'm trying to save Olga this this trip. 
So I uh, say, so what are we doing here? And it's like 8.30, 8.35. Like, well, we'll just sit down. Waiting room's empty. And the doctor's just going to come out. And uh, they'll give you an evaluation. Okay. And then you'll be on your way. Oh. And I thought, okay, so this is my window. I can, I can tell Olga to come now. Although we could be done in 25 minutes yeah. and then I'm just going to turn around and go home. Yeah. I feel super bad for Olga having to get on the freeway. So I said, uh, okay, I'll, I'll do this. And um, so I said, uh, all right. So we sat down, filled out a little paperwork. Five minutes later, nurse comes out, goes, oh, the doctor's going to see you now. I said, okay, good. We're moving along pretty good. Sat down in the doctor's office and... A guy comes in, and I go, okay, doctor came in pretty quick. This uh, this is all going according to plan. But he's not the doctor. Mm. He's the clipboard yeah. evaluator yeah. guy okay. who's got a lot of questions. Yeah. Many, many, many questions. He's so the now, medical producer. Now we're sitting there. And, the segment producer. Yes, exactly. By the time he's done with his questions, we're kind of up <laughs> against it at this point. A little late now. I can't call Olga. Yeah. It's maybe a little late for that. But- I'm sitting there, and he says, okay, I'll go get the doctor. And now it's like, okay, I think I got about 15 minutes with this doctor. Hopefully, he's just got all the stuff the other guy got, and then he can go, you either need one of these or you don't well, need one of these. You run the obvious risk of, all right, you're, you qualify. Let's get her in the machine. Right. Well, no, because that's, that's an appointment. That's, that's, oh, he's not, though, that's not on the table. Nobody would know. be that no. efficient. I didn't know if that was gonna, on the table. That's, like, that's, let's get her in. That's two weeks down okay. the road. So I'm like, so then the guy comes in, and... He starts talking, and then he talks some more, and then he keeps talking. And God bless the guys. He's explaining how the brain works. MRI and, is short for magnetic resonance imaging. No, I got it. I, I know, doctor. I'm sitting, Here's on, the PowerPoint. I'm sitting on the chair, and he pulls up uh, the, the desk, and he's, he's talking to Natalia. And he's, you know, he's, got, he's got basically the same questions that the other guy had, but, but he's got to add on to a lot of that. With a lot of sidebar stuff that never existed, mm-hmm. like I know that can be tough, you know, you know, you know, not feeling good. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. not a good feeling. I'm Move like, yeah, right yeah, along. yeah. And by the way, I grew up in a world where you would be smoking <laughs> and like hitting on my mom <laughs> and going, yeah, take a shot of vermouth, yeah. rub some dirt on it. You, you know? tell you, I bet all the boys are after you. Now we're talking about the feelings <laughs> and how that doesn't feel so good. You, you know? know, you're experiencing. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I guarantee you, Gina and I have, mm. which is you want to know, like, how the fuck do I close this stroller? Oh, or how God. do I get this recipe? And you click on the YouTube thing oh. and it's eight minutes of the upper baby. Baby stroller and oh. produce it. 19. I don't care. I just want to know how to close On it. On anyone's food website yes, behind, b- a- besides mine, I defy you to find the recipe in the first eight pages. No, the, re- the, fir- the first eight paragraphs are yeah. always like, I have a lifelong <laughs> love affair with rice. Like, I don't care. I just yes. want to know. Exactly. So My now, grandma used to- <laughs> I'm in this really unfortunate position because I'm looking at my phone and I've wazed myself back to my house. Oh. Uh, I, I love Megan Kelly. I respect Megan Kelly. This thing has been set up two weeks ago. Uh, I've not given any indication that I'm not going to make it. Oh and we're kind of getting to it. And now it's like, it's going to take you 22 <laughs> minutes to get home. Your hits at 945. I'm backing out the math. Mm-hmm. We got about nine minutes here. And so, hey, Dr. Jenu, say hi to Megan Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I have to sit there and kind of go, I can't, you know, he's talking about the brain, how the mm. brain is effective. They, they've done studies. Yeah. The studies have yeah. suggested that some of this stuff can go on for eight months. He's doing a lecture. It's also, I can read all this. Yeah. Also, exercise. It turns out to be a good thing. It oh. turns out they used to tell you to rest, but and also magnesium and hydration. <laughs> She's a volleyball player. Hurry the fuck up about it. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I I can't go pointing at my watch or like, hey, I'm moving along because wrap it up. He, he's being the the best doctor yes. he can be, yes. giving the time. I don't know, like I don't know if he knows me or recognizes me and is giving a little extra mm-hmm. effort. Whereas you know, mm-hmm. my feeling is doctors are usually on the move. Yeah, you know okay. what I mean. Yeah. Not on the move, not on the move, and so I'm sitting there and I'm sort of listening to him and I'm trying to 
have some sort of posture of like what would concern you know look like. But I'm also looking at ways on my phone, and it just added four well, minutes. What would a human look yeah. like when they were concerned? Well, he is concerned. <laughs> looking at ways. So I'm like, I just keep looking at the phone. I I I, I start wrestling with. He puts his hand on your knees. Like, are you okay? You look stressed. <laughs> I am. It's just a routine. Your daughter's gonna be okay. I'm. I'm. Listen. Uh, to to be fair, <laughs> I'm a you know I'm a fair to midland person. She seems okay. But there are some concerns, mm-hmm. but I just went through the clipboard where they do the, uh, I'm going to give you five random numbers, yeah. and then you repeat mm-hmm. them back to me. And she's doing very well at all this stuff. So I'm, I'm not sitting there, you know, I'm not seeing blood trickle right. out of her ear. And I'm also wondering, like, <laughs> at some point, do I, like, pipe up and go, do you, you know Megan Kelly? <laughs> or, you know, I have a Zoom call? Or... Uh, is there a brochure you could hand us on How's your Wi Fi? <laughs> right. So I'm like, oh, God. Uh, okay. I, I, okay. So we wrap right about the time of the hit. Oh, boy. So then I, he says, you know, now you got to make an appointment for the follow up and the blah, blah, blah. And then I say to Natalia, I, I just got to run out to the car for a second, like just get the paperwork. And she's pretty self sufficient. Mm-hmm. So, I go out to the car, I plug the phone in, I zoom in, and, and now I'm like, they're kind of, where are you? And I'm like, I, uh, I'm playing the kid's card. You right. know, I got a daughter, I had to take her in. It took, you know, they're, they're sympathetic yeah. to it, but they're like, when are you going to be home? And I'm like, uh, Waze says 27 minutes. And it's like, oh, that's, uh, that's not going to work. And then it's like, at some point, it's like, oh, we have a pretty clear connection yeah. right now. Yeah. Why don't we just, you know, do it while you're, you're driving? Great. And uh, what could go wrong? Then I'm going to I'm going to come home in the middle of it. And it's always funny when you're doing a Zoom call and I I I try not to do this, but it's like oh, Dr. Drew calls. And I'm like, what the fuck is that idiot want at 10, 10 in the morning? You know, like, he's, he just thinks of all he's, people. He just thinks he's calling. Sure. Me. But uh, it's still Lopo. easy to get angry at these people. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm sitting in the car, we're going, and now it's got, can you turn it landscape? Ah, the goddamn landscape. Uh, it's like, can you turn it? It's yeah, like, it's, yeah. I don't know if it's going to pop off the mount. I've never done this mm-hmm. before, but we end up getting a p- pretty clear connection. And, uh, then I end up just sitting in the car. And then at some point, Natalia comes out. No, 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 no. No, no, no. And then we go live and I explain, you know, my daughter's in the car, you know, say hi and all that stuff. And uh, we made our way back. And then I got home in 25 minutes, but the interview is 45 minutes. So now I have to let Natalia out and then just sort of circle the neighborhood sure, yep, for the yep. next uh, yep. 20 minutes, half an hour. Gas, seven bucks a mm-hmm. gallon, just circling. Uh, so anyway, it all worked out, but it was a. Uh, Kind of harrowing. Oh boy, I will say. Um, and I don't know how you guys are wired, but when I, I, I'm always, I'm always curious about how people are sort of fast and loose with times and stuff. Like I was so acutely aware of when I was going to was bot. It was like pins and needles mm-hmm. the the whole time. I wish more people were that way. I think well, we're all like that. Yeah, and like you said, you are all us three. Like that. Not, <laughs> like not, so, not society. That's, that's the thing. It's not just the we're up against it. It's the it that's fine. That that sucks. But ten times worse, we're up against it and I can't tell anybody. I can't how do I convey yeah. this to you? Right. And I try like you try to be polite and they don't pick up the signals and now they're off the friends list. Yeah, well, like I said, the third time you use the phrase "can do," and "will <laughs> yep. do," and "see you then." You betcha. Uh, you betcha. All righty then. The, that's that's wrapping it. But anyway, learned a lot. Yeah. Got my phone in. Made some lemonade out of lemons, and and there we have it. There was one thing that I I couldn't help. Chris, you got the picture of like the teenage Crohn's disease thing. I, I oh boy, you there, get a placard for that. By the way, there was a little. Kiosk. I've heard there was something has it. put up well, in, an in the doctor's office. Let's get the facts about pediatric Crohn's oh, disease. No. Just chronic pants shitting. Yes. And I was. Uh, Don't be technical. I was looking <laughs> at <laughs> it. <laughs> and I'm very, you know me, I love to examine the mixed couples on TV, yeah. the gay couples, you know, the. 
Subaru commercial where you got the white guy, the Asian guy, and the black guy, and they're all going camping, which yeah. I would argue has probably never happened in nature, pardon the pun. I don't think I, – I, I've, I've seen I – can, I, can, I have a scenario where an Asian guy and a black guy go camping and a white guy and a black guy mm-hmm. or just not the mm-hmm. three That's of them. That's a specific combination. So everyone needs to be represented. So mm-hmm. Every every commercial, every ad, every brochure, it's the, the black couple and the gay couple and the blonde and yeah. the thing. It's out of control. Yeah. I was looking at this. There are, I don't know, eight kids, nine kids represented. Uh, it is a, it's a picture. It's a drawing. It's a cartoon of yeah. kids who have Crohn's. They're all the same. Now, they're not white, and they're not black, and they're not Hispanic, and they're not Asian. They're just some sort of like future people. tan, mm. dark-haired, yeah. brown-eyed future people. They belong in the Matrix. And yeah. I've, I've realized, oh, this is kind of where we're going. Yeah. In, in that, why take the time, you know, how many Crayolas do you have? Yeah. you got to draw a picture of the black guy and the Asian guy and the lesbian gal and the blonde one, the redhead. Like, everyone needs to be represented. Uh-huh. Wouldn't it be easier if we just threw everyone in a fucking Cuisinart yeah. and just made one person? And that way, when we're the, the, the graphic designer yeah. that has to draw this, it's just getting out one flesh tone, one hair. I've never seen this before. I don't know if you guys have. No. I've never. No, of course not. There's no such thing as eight kids represented without diversity. But this is the ultimate diversity because <laughs> they're, all the they're all an amalgamation <laughs> yes. of, of one race. And or there's five no, races. If Sorry. you took their hair off, there's no gender difference either. True. They just slapped right. a short hair and a long hair on random kids. The right. girl in the middle in the back, I think, is the only one you can definitively say, I think she's Asian. I can't even say definitively. She I has, would lean the most towards an ethnicity. She has bangs. Well, right which, there. Is that why? Which I think, <laughs> and it's 2022, so she could be, she could be, I, I've never seen it, but then I realized this is where we're heading, uh-huh. and it's also a big time saver. Yeah, for sure. And then I don't really know how one can complain about it. I suppose if you were blonde. Yeah. Or, <laughs> Underrepresented. Or, you know, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> sure. You could go, I don't Where feel I? Right. represented. But interesting, right? Yeah, I mean, very. It, this, is, this is the doctor's office. This is a children's hospital. I mean, you have to play it real down the middle with all, yeah. all your stuff. Just found that in this in this world, they all were the same person. It's very interesting. And it's not like they were in a diverse part of town. No offense, Arcadia. Mm-mm. Actually, I don't think they'd be offended by that at all. They're, oh, it's, the, point of pride. it's on the city crest. Point of pride. <laughs> they all kind of have a, you know, meet you in the middle... 12 year old Hispanic. Yes. Kind of kind of thing. And I think somebody Maybe a Filipino. Pan Asian. Yeah. 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 The eyes a little like it's just and, and and I don't know if there's some sort of computer algorithm or something. I, I remember tell me if you guys seem to recall this. You guys remember, I think it was in National Geographic and it must have been 20 years ago where they went this is how America's going to look in 2050. Yes. Kind of yes. And they Shorter. essentially just showed yes. one Kind of tan yes. American, shorter, with, with brown darker. eyes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's. They said we're all just gonna yes. we're gonna look like this one day. That there we are. That's we're here. the manifestation. You're of that. absolutely right. Chris's time is coming. That's right. <laughs> the other uh, the other thing I I saw I took a picture of was a guy in a truck, which was uh, I was out walking around last night and uh, I came upon the gas station and I I marveled at the six dollar and 77 cent gas or whatever it is and i took a picture of this guy because this hispanic guy clearly gardener type he has a full-size dually pickup truck Mm -hmm. i mean big dually pickup truck and he's pulling the two-wheel trailer in the back which is basically the guys who come in and cut your trees down Mm -hmm. and throw it all in the back of the thing a huge dumpster and yeah and this guy's filling up and this guy's got his wife riding shotgun, so she's working. Mm. I love to see that. And he's filling up. It's like eight at night. But ostensibly, he was working all day in the neighborhood. Sure, sure. He does not live in this neighborhood. Mm. He lives in Silmar. He's got a he's got a little bit of a trek home. And I'm thinking, fucking gas, seven bucks an hour for this dude. Yeah. And he's filling up that dually, and that dually's got a tank that holds 25 gallons and he's working and by the way dragging that trailer he has a bed 
the bed you can pull up on it, Chris. I think the bed is just filled with tools and garbage and and everything else. And I'm like, this dude is getting six miles to the gallon yeah. dragging this stuff around, and it's costing him, you know, 175 bucks to fill up. And I'm like, riding low. And he's got his wife riding shotgun, so I'm guessing he's not rolling in cash. And it is just this gas thing is just kicking the shit out of dudes who have to yeah. work. Yeah, like people who. You know, look, if you can take your scooter to the Trader Joe's up the street where you work, no not, not as impactful. Mm, yeah. These dudes who are at the bottom of the... And by the way, if you're just staying home and hammering welfare checks, it's not that impactful either. The dudes living toward the bottom. The dudes were always talking about fa- family yeah. and salt of the earth and hard work, and they're getting the shit kicked out of them. And there's just no way to avoid this gas price impacting guys like that so you're right it's a rich man poor man gas prices don't affect you right so i went up to him you did (laughs) well first off i took a picture and i always feel bad because i feel like they're thinking oh this white guy's gonna turn him into immigration customs you know or something like i feel weird like just standing there taking a picture of the poor guy in his truck he doesn't know i mean you are gonna do that what i do i am doing it (laughs) that's after the show then i went up and talked to him and i was like uh how, uh, what kind of mileage you getting in this bad boy? And he's like, I don't know. Like, he didn't want <laughs> to, I don't think he don't wanted to engage. calculate yeah. what he, yeah. what he was doing, but, uh, it's yeah, good. hard oh, boy. working dude at, uh, uh, six, I don't know, 50. I don't know what there's, it's up to seven. It's almost up to seven in most places. And you must have had the bends because when we were in KC, it was about three forty four, and they wouldn't stop bitching. Oh, it I It never know. stopped how high the gas prices were. I know. I know it is. Yeah. KC was, yeah. In the threes, crazy. The scary part is diesel is the most expensive mm. and that's the stuff we all need for all the stuff that's at the Trader Joe's or the Costco, mm-hmm. the stuff that's dragging all our goods around and all the container ships, right. all diesel. So that can just, that'll get tacked on to whatever it is Oof. we're trying to purchase. Um, Chris had a, we, I will say this on a uh, on a happyish note. Uh, the flight out of LAX to Chicago, first class, was a little bit of silverware and a plate la. versus wow. a, a box. Uh, still have not endeavored to bring back citrus. I oh. forgot my citrus. The drinks does not supply chain. Just can't do the lemons or the limes. <laughs> what Undoable. airline? Uh, where did we fly? United. United. Oh, yeah. I uh, <laughs> thankfully, I had not. Now listen, if you're listening and you have anything to do with United uh, first class, um, I had a first class ticket. I had a four hour flight. I was planning on having a drink, but I also have experienced your airline. So as I was sitting in the airport, I pulled the lemon slice that was out that was in my drink smart put it in a cocktail napkin Good. wrapped it up and put it in my pocket <laughs> because i knew you guys weren't going to have lemons on a flight although it's first class and you now have chicken kiev yeah we're back we're back I can't confirm he did this, and not just any cocktail napkin. The stranger sitting next to him, he's like, hey, are you using that napkin under your beer? And the guy's like, no. And then then Adam gets it from that guy and wraps his... You are such an old Jewish grandmother. It's (laughs) unbelievable. Did you take the sweet and low, too? I don't. I just needed... I needed my... A a vodka soda minus a lemon slice is the worst cocktail on the planet. That's diesel. That's... That's bad. So I uh, asked I asked him if he's using his napkin. You couldn't ask the bartender for a new one? I didn't want to have to get up. Okay. Efficiency. Sure. Economy of movement. Yep, 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 like yep. a swimmer mm-hmm. cutting through an Olympic-sized pool without leaving a wake. That's what I was doing. Yeah. You're out there floundering. Oh, God. And drowning. Like an asshole. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Barely keeping the head above water. <laughs> so, yeah, I asked the guy for his napkin. He, at some point, he was like, hey, man, show, or something like that. Mm. Uh, I took my mm. uh, little nap. It was already had his beer the, sweat on yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> the circle. Daintily made a little little condom. A little for origami. My, for a little origami 
for my for my lemon slice, which then of course bled through to the napkin of as course. I put it in my sweatpants. Sure. But uh, it, it was more of a <clears throat> I would I would call it a um, I would I would call it a moral victory, right? A principled stance. It's what it's what I took. Do you know the irony of the of your lack of citrus <clears throat> while flying into Chicago? Hmm. The reason it's code is O R D. Uh, it was built on an orchard. Old Orchard is, yeah, is at least three orchard. of the malls in Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. No, That's so what funny. kind of orchard, but apparently there's many. So yes. perhaps lemons and limes <laughs> once populated the area you uh, once... I'll go with apples and pears, but you might be right. You know what? I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. <laughs> Probably a little less citrusy, yeah. But there's no possible reason anymore other than pure lethargy mm-hmm. upon the airlines. But I never... I never get why the people who are on the front lines... Don't kind of report to whoever the superiors are and go, you know, I got a lot of people bringing this up. Yeah. Like, when we're going to make a move here? Or we're, we're two years in. But Can it's we like you make said, a move? the ones on the front lines are probably exactly the ones who don't want it to come back. Like, oh, good. Finally, yeah. no Unless more they, lemon yeah. cutting. All right. Is is Paul Feig uh, waiting in the wings? Yes, sir. Oh, good. Well, he's so prompt. We'll talk to him about his many triumphs, new shows. Um very good minx. I actually watched a couple episodes of that. And I really like the other one, uh, Welcome to Flatch. They're all good because it's Paul Feig. Yep. All right. Let me first tell you about J.B. Weld, world's strongest bond. That's J.B. Weld. The brand DIYers and pros have trusted for over 50 years. Use their uh, epoxies. I use their super glues. Um their putty sticks, um, they, they have everything, plastic, wood, metal, any surface, uh, glass, ceramics. You can keep it in your kitchen drawer, your toolbox, or uh, with your supplies in your, uh, in your garage. And, of course, um, I've been using this stuff for years. They've, they've expanded their line. They used to just make stuff like liquid metal for like, um, for like muffler repair and stuff, and now they're doing everything. Also, they're the proud owner of Herculiner, Herculiner's original DIY truck bed liner. So if you're looking for the world's strongest truck bed liner, Herculiner has you covered. And JB Weld's available at jbweld.com or Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly, Amazon, Michaels, and more. It's proudly made in the USA. Well, our friend and great uh, director and filmmaker and producer, Paul Feig, is up next. It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy, Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. Abenj me, abenj me. If you said Red Dawn. Avenge me! Avenge me! You're correct. Now, back to the show. Paul Feig has joined us. Paul has done <clears throat> so many great movies and series and shows over the over the years and been such a good friend of the show. He's got a couple of new ones coming out. Welcome to Flatch, and that's a docu-comedy, and that right. premieres uh, tomorrow night on Fox, as you hear this, at uh, 830 Central. And then uh, Minx, which is available tomorrow on HBO Max, although I saw the first episode and it was really good because uh well a it was really funny and well written and then b it was like los angeles 1970 <laughs> and i grew up here so i'm a big fan of all that stuff good to see you paul hey good to see you adam thanks for having me on hello everybody Hi. how's it going so uh and we you got some other stuff coming up as well and we can we can get into that but uh let's talk about minx it's a based on a true story right Yeah, it's kind of a fictional retelling of the birth of Playgirl magazine, um, but but told told in a much funnier way than I think what really happened. Yeah, a lot of lot of frontal dong. You guys (laughs) need to prepare for. uh, Oh, uh, consider me prepared. Times it on. You're going to get a face (laughs) full of dong. (laughs) As midnight, right at midnight, you you get a bunch. I I will. It's hilarious because yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, Adam, but we you know, we had to c- cut a trailer for it. You know, we cut a you know a trailer to kind of let you know what was coming up, and then to be on YouTube or anything, you can't have anything off color in it. So anybody who sees the trailer is going to be hit, like you say, hit right in the face with a <laughs> with a big onslaught, if you will. It it ain't you know. There's no 
potted plant strategically right, placed. Right. Uh, no, no banana being held. No, it, there is no Austin Powers <laughs> right. scene in there. It is full frontal oh. dong. And it strikes me that we now, in the last several years, have 7,000% more mm-hmm. dong than we ever had. <laughs> it, HBO has fully it, embraced the dong. It was yeah. it was titties, then it was titties and ass, then it was guy's ass, mm-hmm. then it was titties, ass, guy's ass, vagine, yeah. and then we flatlined for like 26 years, right. and then dong. Yeah. And now it's all dong we, all we were, the time. We, Yes, we were trying to sell this show for so long. We would have been the first dong back on TV, but now we got you know <laughs> we got snaked, if you will, uh, by the other shows. You got Hello. snaked by Game of Thrones initially, I think. Uh, that is true. I know exactly. Can't keep up with that. <laughs> how uh, how long have you been working on this? Well, we've been trying to sell this for a number of years. I mean, we were out, you know, in, in the year leading up to the pandemic, trying to sell this everywhere. And it's one of those shows I was like, well, who doesn't want to buy this show? It's super funny. The characters are great. It, it's, you know, it's good water cooler material, as they used to say in the in the, in the 50s. Um, but then nobody wanted it. They wouldn't touch it. Everybody loved it. And they're like, oh, but we can't. Oh, we can't. We can't. And it was so this thing was dead. It was absolutely dead. And it wasn't until the middle of the pandemic when TBS had kind of merged with HBO. Max, they had liked the they liked the pitch, but they just said they couldn't do it because of their standards and practices. So they can't, so this thing was like a phoenix out of the ashes, if you will. And, and I can't believe we got to make it. Yeah, so many projects have that trajectory, and it's always a question that I wrestle with because I'm in the same business. You go, you pitched it everywhere, no one was interested. So there's a part of me that goes, well, reality on reality's terms. Right, yeah. You pitched it everywhere and no one was interested. Maybe it's yeah. not the greatest idea. Let it go. Why are you burning yeah. calories? Move on to the mm-hmm. next project. And then there's a little part of you that has had, you know, my first two TV projects were Love Line yeah. on MTV and The Man Show on Comedy <laughs> Central. Man Show was a pilot on ABC that was not picked up and went away completely and then ended up being a big hit. And Loveline was a syndicated late night show mm-hmm. that went away completely and then became a big hit. So who am I to tell you, let it go? Those are the first only two good shows I've done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm always a fa- I'm a big believer in like, if it didn't work, let it go. I think passion projects are really dangerous because, um, you know, there's the kind of thing you can't, you, once you, uh, have a success, you cash in all your chips to do your passion project, which may not be the most commercial thing in the world. So that's always dangerous. But yeah, that when this one came roaring from the back, again, I wasn't trying to sell it at that point. I was just sad that it was gone. It's like, oh, well, you know, there it goes. And then suddenly you get a call. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So what is your involvement or how much hands on and day to day do you have in a project like this? Well, in a project like this, I, I all my time goes into setting it up, getting it together, making sure we got the right people on it, making sure that, you know, everything is in place, because I know that like Ellen Rappaport, who who created the show, is so smart and so good, she's going to be able to run the show. And I'm not going to go in there and go like, hey, you should do this, do that. You know, you know, I'll read scripts and give give thoughts and all that. But I'm not the guy I don't produce by going like, do this because I don't want them to do it like the way I would do it, because. I would do it. I've seen the way I would do it. And I like the way she did it much better. So, so once it's all set up and it's up and running and we get the pilot, right. Then I kind of, you know, just back off and let them do their thing. And then just sort of uh, give advice from afar if, if it's needed, which it was not on this. Cause they just nailed it. Well, you know, 10 minutes ago, I was like, everyone was like, you have to see licorice pizza because that was Los Angeles when you were nine years old and all the stuff you remember and the billboards and the cars and the hairstyles and everything. You need to see licorice pizza so you can relive this childhood. But after seeing Minx and then the Lakers dynasty yeah. show, I'm like, I think I'm, covered. I think I'm caught up. Well, yeah. no, distinct lack of dong in licorice pizza. Distinct. Oh, really? Ironically, from Paul Thomas Anderson, you think there would be dong everywhere. No. Dong a plenty. <laughs> He loaned all the dong to us. <laughs> so um, now there's many other projects to get into as well. We got um, Welcome to Flatch, which I've been seeing tons of. Uh, Fox must really be into this because I've seen a lot of trailers of promotion the for it. The pilot is so good. Yeah. 
Oh, th- no, it's they're so they're really been such supporters of this. I love this show so much. It's based on a British show called This Country, which was another kind of docu-comedy about these two cousins. It's just like a super low, you know, concept thing. But just the cast is funny. We discovered this amazing new actress, uh, Holmes. Uh, we found her on Twitter, believe it or not. And she, yeah, we because that was the hardest thing. But this show was, the, the original British show was written by, by a brother and sister and they shoot it in their hometown and their families in it. So it's very funny, but you're kind of like, okay, we're going to redo it. And yeah. I, we don't have them. How do we create that relationship? <laughs> That's exactly it. And so I, I and I was like, I, I don't know how we're going to do this. It was my, my, uh, my creative executive, uh, Greg Lubin and my company came to me one day. So I said, I think I found her. I said, what do you mean? And he said, just watch these videos on Twitter. And just uh, Holmes who does, who just, she talks to the camera in her car is different characters and was so perfect that, that I, was, she was the only person we saw hundreds of other actors and nobody was right for it except her. So she got the role. Uh, also coming up, uh, I think on uh, Netflix later this year, The School for Good and Evil, which has uh, yes. Charlize Theron and uh, yeah. Kelly Washington, uh, sorry, Kerry Washington and uh, Ben Kingsley and Lawrence Fishburne. Right. Wow, that's yeah. stacked. Yeah. How'd you pull that one off? <laughs> <laughs> I know, exactly. I'm still pulling it off. Honestly, I'm, I'm headed. I head to a Budapest on Thursday to uh, to uh, shoot a few more uh, things for it. But uh, it, it's. I'm really proud of it. it. It's it's big. I mean, it's a big one. It's a, one of these effects driven kind of fantasy movies. But it's also very fun and funny. I, I say it's kind of. Uh, let's see, Frozen meets Princess Bride with a bit of uh, Harry Potter thrown in. So. Done. Oh, wow. You got are, my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> are you in? Yes. And so uh, it's in Budapest. It's filmed in Budapest. You'll be directing. Um, yeah, I directed it already. It's actually, we're just doing some pickups right oh, now. Oh, you're doing pickups. Is there, uh, yeah. you know, like I would imagine as a director, like on one hand, you talk about uh, Welcome to Flatch and you get young upstart, you know, YouTubers, mm-hmm. and you can basically direct them however way you want to direct them because. Yeah. They're happy to be there. Lawrence exactly. Fishburne. Have a job. You know what I mean? Char- <laughs> Charlie, Sir, Ben Kingsley. You know, is there a little tiptoeing about? With those young pups. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, I always go into it very nervously because I'm like, oh, boy, you know, I really got to be in my game. But what I find is is the, the people who are great are great because they are there and they want to do the job and they they love to be there. And then it's just my job to not be an idiot to make them lose faith in what I do, you know, because even if you hear somebody's like tough, I'm always like, OK, well, let's let me find out when when they were tough. Because maybe they were tough when they were working with an idiot who gave them terrible directions or didn't listen to them, you know. Sure. So, so I, so I, I've never had a problem with an actor because I'm so in tune with actors because I was one, and all oh. I care about is them being able to do what they do. I was in heavyweights, motherfuckers. That's what he says. I'm that's sorry. right. That's what he says. See, that's like a master class <laughs> in acting. We have a picture of me and Ben Kingsley oh. famously backstage at the upfronts. Yeah, Sir Ben, not a fan of Adam. <laughs> It's a funny. Really? It's a funny picture. What did you say? What did you say to him, Adam? What did you oh, do? please do tell him what you said. Uh, we were. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, the look on Ben's face. Right? Have you seen heavyweights? <laughs> <laughs> we were in this big gothic old bank. You know, New York has all these great. Oh, uh, New York City and 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 other places. You know, Chicago and places like that. They have these. Big old, it used to be a bank yes. building, and now it's a coffee bar or something. Yes. And it's like, oh, right. It's this is going to be the highest ceiling and the most <laughs> columns and the most marble. It's like we used Very to. echoey. Yeah, yeah. We, we made banks. They were like shrines yeah. to people with money back then. In Lawrence, Kansas, there's a very fancy restaurant called Teller's just because of that. Oh, so this was, nice. some, yep. some, this was some venue that used to be something, yeah. but it was big and marvelous. And he was doing... We were on, I don't know, we were on History Channel together, and he was, it was the upfront, so we had to go there to talk to the sponsors and do a little presentation up on stage, and he was there because they were doing King Tut or something. He was like King Tut, and I was doing some, you know, Fakakta Home Improvement show, you know, and, we, they, you know, it's the same thing. They tell you, get there an hour early, and they set you up backstage, and there was no dressing rooms or green rooms. Everyone was just sort of sitting there mm-hmm. with a fruit platter, and he was just sitting there all alone. Just sitting there. I think everyone was scared. Enjoying his time alone. Everyone's scared to approach him, you know? So I thought, I, I don't get a chance to 
chew the fat with Ben Kingsley that often. So I'll go up to him and I'll say something because, you know, I'd, you know, I'd always heard from all the super hot chicks in high school that they would have loved someone to ask them to the prom, but talking. they were too intimidated. <laughs> and so they're so lonely. Not the case at all no. with Ben Kingsley, as it turns out. <laughs> so, he really valued his privacy. Exactly. I gave him a boutonniere. He gave me a corsage. Um, so I, I, I decided, well, if you're going to walk up to Ben Kingsley, you should have an angle. You know, and <laughs> that, pic- that picture kind of looks like you're doing his makeup. Though <laughs> I picked yeah. an angle and my angle was, Ben, I know you're here. You're collecting your thoughts. You're backstage. And you're probably pretty nervous about now about going out on stage because I know you do, you know, some TV, yeah. maybe a movie here or there. But you, you've never been in front of a live audience. Right. And it's a classically drained Shakespearean. I'm, I'm a comedian, so I did the man show. He's you know what knighted. I mean? We had bleachers. Right. I, I know what it's like to get out there. Yeah. Now, first thing you're going to do, you're going to talk too fast. You know what I mean? Because the nerves are going to kick in. You know what I mean? So you need to steady yourself. Keep your hands in your pockets. Your hands aren't shaking about. If you think you're going too slow, that's just right. That's right. It's, it compose your maybe a picture of everyone in their underpants. <laughs> he just looked at me the, the entire time when I was explaining to him that, what it was like to be on stage. Have you had that experience, Mr. Fig? Well, my problem is I get really, I'm, I'm such a super fan of people that I like that I always think they're going to blow me off at a party, but I want to say hi. Like I, I did this with Fran Lebowitz. Uh, I was at some party, and I, I think she's really great, and this is a number of years ago. And I, I run up. Like, uh, Fran, uh, I'm Paul Feig. I, I directed Bridesmaids, and I'm just a big fan, and I know you're busy, and I don't want to take up your time, so I'm just going to go. And I leave her looking like, what the fuck was that? You know, <laughs> it's and, hit and run. I've done that to Tom Ford three times <laughs> various different parties, so it's really bad. As opposed to the time I was at the Golden Globes after party. And uh, got so drunk that I introduced, as my wife will tell me, I introduced myself to Meryl Streep, not one, not two, but three separate times. Fantastic. Uh, That is awesome. Yes. Speaking of Tom Ford, I've always wondered this about you, Paul. So you're a natty dresser for people who are listening to the podcast right now. They can't see. He's got the, by the way, the full ones are not. I appreciate. Mm -hmm. I see adult, I see adult males. I see adult males. Often wear the half mm. Windsor knot, and it is. I'm embarrassed on their behalf. Uh, but uh, the be end of May, the, the sharp dresser. What do you wear on set? What do you wear when you're working? When you're, did you wear? Do you wear the, oh, the suit? Oh yeah, I'm in. I'm in suit and tie every wow. day, whether I'm in prep, in post, uh, in production. Yeah, I, it's it's my uniform. I am. I always say, you know, you're the captain of the ship, and you're the director. And if I got on a ship and the captain was wearing sweatpants, I'd get off the ship. So, <laughs> wow, that's I fair. need to uphold a certain standard. Well, well, I am so glad our captain sets a different uh, precedent because that's pretty much what we wear. Yeah, yes. we fall in line. All my crew wear sweats. <laughs> What's uh? How many of the Oscar-nominated films have you seen? Which ones spoke to you? Interested in your thoughts on I... what's what's coming? I've been trying to work my way through them because I'm a member of the Academy, so I get that, you know, the we get the app so you can watch them at home, which is really cool. Um, I, You know, I really, I, I kind of went into Power of the Dog, like, all right, what everybody's talking about this. I kind of really liked it. I thought it was great because I, I didn't know where it was going, and I didn't realize, I don't want to give anything away, I didn't realize it was what it was by the end. You're like, oh, that's cool. So mm. I, I, I kind of dug that movie, I guess. You say. and Sam Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. Just... <laughs> These guys walk around in chaps, no shirt. Laying down together, no cowboy ever slept in chaps. God damn it! <laughs> well, the thoughts. wrath of Sam on yeah. he, he, he was uh, that was awesome. But Paul, have you seen Coda? <laughs> Uh, I have a very sad story about Coda because oh. we were supposed to produce that. My company oh. was supposed to produce that movie, and we had it at a place that then decided they didn't want to do it, and we lost it. And now, now it's but oh, it's wow. great. It's beautiful. Think about how good it could have been. <laughs> oh my God! Exactly. <laughs> no, it was. I mean, they did a great job. It, it, it was such an amazing script, and I love that director. And uh, no, they, it was. I was very pleased with that. When you uh, Hungary and uh, Budapest. Are you shooting that? Are you trading it out for Chicago in the 40s or is it just a place like for this for this film? Well, for this one, it is actually this movie we actually shot in Belfast. 
Um, but but with, with these pickups that we need to do, one of our actors is on a show that's uh, that shoots in in Budapest, so we're going to go there to pick it up. So it's just a place. We're shooting mostly inside, and we have one thing in the ruins we're going to shoot. But I shot Spy all in Budapest, and we made that double for Paris and for um, uh, I forget Rome and all that, and uh, it worked really great. But originally, it wasn't supposed to take place in in Budapest, but I got there and I loved the look of it so much that I changed the script to make the whole second half take place in Budapest and because of that we got to shoot in the the Four Seasons Gresham Palace which is one of the most beautiful hotels in the world they've never let anybody shoot there but since we were playing it as itself they let us we even they even let us blow out the windows with machine gun fire <laughs> so there you go <laughs> we're uh, who's the new leader in the clubhouse I mean I'm from Los Angeles it used to be everything was shot in Los Angeles and then at some point it Toronto. became New Mexico mm-hmm. and then it became Atlanta and it became Toronto and then we started getting to Prague and Who's yeah. who's on who's coming up? Who's cooled no, down? No, the big winner right now. The big winner is London. Mm. Everyone's in London. You really? cannot get stage space in London to save your life. We were supposed to shoot my movie in London, and then they we just couldn't do it, so we ended up in Belfast. Wow. Do they are they offering a bunch of breaks or tax incentives, or why is everyone in yeah. London now? Yeah, big big tax incentives there. They have really good crews. They've got a lot of studios. Although what's happening now is different streamers and and studios are renting the full studio and won't let anybody else in (laughs) you know it used to be you just rented studio space where you could but now they're all in such competition that you kind of they won't rent to other other you know uh, streamers or other companies so so then you know so you may have a situation where a a, a soundstage a bunch of sound stages are sitting empty uh, but they're just hanging on to them in case another one of their projects comes up. So it's it's a little screwy. Is there more production going on now than ever before? It seems like there's just yeah. content out yeah. the wazoo. I mean, look at how many places need content they need constant content so i mean for for those of us who you know who come up with that stuff and, and that's our job it's fantastic it's hard to get your stuff seen you know because there's so much stuff but at the end of the day you just want to get it made you know adam as long as you get it made it exists and then you know at least you have it yeah then you can talk to all the people who haven't seen it <laughs> <laughs> which is always funny. I always, I always feel like I always say I'm, I'm just making party tapes sometimes, you know, but uh, eventually people see it. So is um, and so for you, how do you decide what you want to direct versus produce versus wear another hat on? Yeah, I mean, it kind of just depends what I have, like, a burning uh, sort of, you know, vision for. Those are the things I want to direct. And then with these, produ- you know, the stuff I produce is things that are brought to me, like, oh, that's really cool. But it usually comes with somebody who has a really strong take on it. Like, if it's a TV show, a showrunner, you know, or if it's a movie, some, some other filmmaker comes in with it. And then that's the stuff I really like to produce. Because, again, I, my whole goal is to bring other people's voices to, to the screen. You know, that's why I don't want to micro manage when I get on a show like Minx that's run so well that you know like Ellen had the vision it's like I'm just going to get out of your way and just help you out if, if if you know you need protection or if there's something you need or you know if I think there's something going wrong I can weigh in um, but then you know but then like Welcome to Flatch who I do with my friend Jenny Bix who's amazing used to be a writer on, on uh, Sex and the City she wrote uh, The Greatest Showman she's an amazing writer but we wanted to do it together and so I directed the first three episodes kind of set the tone i wrote two episodes and then i had to go off to london to, to get into my movie but then i was you know we were always in constant contact uh with the writing and the cuts and all that but she's amazing and she really just you know headed the thing up amazingly well let's talk booze because i know that's uh yes. another another passion of yours what? uh i will oh. say uh you're a you're a gin man and uh yes. and I'll, I'll pronounce this correctly hopefully Arting stalls is that the gin? Yep, and that's, that's uh, it. Arting stalls right here. Mom's uh, maiden name. Uh, yeah, I think we're yep. moving moving toward gin. I often order a, a gin martini now over a vodka now martini. You're and uh, you probably heard my tale of woe of getting the vodka soda with no lemon on a flight. <laughs> That happened to me. I've been on two flights in the last 24 hours. Both times I had to have a gin and soda with no any fruit in it or anything. Yeah. So. What? Uh, Fair. Yeah, I say fed of that. What is up? Uh, I don't know, but, but we do have to start bringing lemon slices, right? I mean, yes. maybe not wrapped in napkins <laughs> like yours, but get a bag or something. <laughs> yeah, people, you know, I'm the worst of all Americans because I complain about shit 
And then listeners send me remedies. They send me mm-hmm. dehydrated this and packets of that mm-hmm. and freeze dried that. And I leave it all on the fucking table. <laughs> and then I get on the plane and then I complain like, about powder? the exact same thing that they tried to help me with. <laughs> no, I hear it. I mean, traveling is just like there's. It's always about what room do I have for anything. It, and I thought thought like iPads would make it better because I used to get on planes with like a thousand books and all that. But you know, oh, it's gonna be easier. But then there's still no room in my goddamn bag because there's something <laughs> I got to drag along. And there's so. also I th- there's something wrong with me in that I just got back from Chicago in Kansas City. It was a total cold snap colder and shit Mm -hmm. and i didn't bring gloves and i have gloves and i don't know why i didn't bring gloves and i'm a fucking idiot for not bringing gloves Mm -hmm. and then i had to (laughs) wrestle with do you buy gloves Uh, another they got a glove stack (laughs) yeah for 48 hours sporting goods and that's 22 (laughs) dollars you know and it's 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 really uh, it's an insane amount you know what i was thinking about the the poor person mentality which doesn't it i can't say I'll buy a million dollar car. That's not a poor person mentality, but the gloves somehow, you know what I I was thinking about the other day? Mm. I walk around my neighborhood. I see the mobile car detailer. I walk around this neighborhood. I see the mobile car detailer all the time because these are busy people and a lot of them are in production and they, you know, come while you're in the office, the car wash is 23 bucks, but these guys, you know, are important and they make a lot more than that. Their time is money and they don't want to sit at the car wash with all the Armenians smoking in Glendale on a, on a Saturday. So they, they call the guy and for 89 bucks, he does it. Mm -hmm. I've somehow I'm gleaned that that's I can't yeah. do that. It's too good for I, you. That's it's too insane good. that you don't do it. And your New Year's resolution was to take care of yourself. That's right. Yeah, this is efficient. <laughs> I, it's it, that's for other families. Right. I'm a Corolla. Well, Adam, you were brought up in the it, during the depression. So that's, that's right. right. It yeah. makes sense. Well, during my mom's yeah. depression. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know exactly. It's the depression. I get that from my dad. That's still in my head from my parents. Like, don't spend money on anything. I but I also think the gloves thing. I have this too, but I I consider it to be a lack of imagination because, like, I'm in L.A. It's like, well, I won't need. Hat and gloves and a coat because it's nice and warm here. And then you get off the plane and it's absolutely freezing. Mm-hmm. And then that, yeah, then it's like, do I just tough it out? And because I know they're at home. Somehow, if they're at home, I feel like I can't do it again. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, my it. again, that's exactly what I do. Whatever temperature it is where I am, even if I'm inside and yeah. the heat's on, that's what it is. That's your setting. Everywhere. Universally, yeah. I would make the world's worst astronaut. What do you mean, oxygen? <laughs> I'm breathing right out of air. Come on, man. It's all around us. I'm lousy with it. I mean, like the, but the old, you see pictures of the old mountain climbers. They'd put on like ties and tweed and then climb up to the top. Sir of Edmund Everest. Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You guys travel a lot. I travel a little bit. Do you not have the, the, the flap or the compartment? You travel the backpack mostly, but the travel, the, the, the flap or the compartment or the whatever where like, you know, sugar packets go and your, your lime packets go and wipes or, or whatever you might need. I don't think it's an issue of not having the flap. I got no. I'm over. Do you not utilize the flap? <laughs> yeah. I'm over flapped. Is my problem? Yeah. Is my backpack has a 128 compartments, yeah. and <laughs> I don't know what's in which. And I have had situ. We landed at LAX three weeks ago, and we we're sitting in LAX, and my car was parked in the parking lot, and I was like my car keys are not in this backpack. And I opened every flap and I turned it upside down and I was shaking it. I was feeling mm-hmm. it. It was like, I was so flummoxed. I was like, ah, how am I going to get home? Not gonna... on the tire? No, I don't leave it on the tire anymore because oh. the car thinks the oh, key fob is close okay. to it or whatever. So I, I always oh. put it in one little compartment. My, anyway, I was so flummoxed, I handed the backpack to Mike August and said, Mike, he's... You know, and he <laughs> dug around and he found him. But it's under a Velcro sure. thing with a flap and a, and a thing. Yeah. I, and I think Paul just calls that the pocket square flap. So that's, that's right. already in that's use. Right. Yeah, well, there, there you go. So right. There it is, right? The yeah, pocket wash. No, my problem... From all my flaps are full, yeah. you know, if you will. Um, and, and so, but it's all, I, I've got, every flap I've got is filled with either um, like uh, sanitary wipes, yeah, you know, because yeah. they every time you get on a plane, they give those to you. And I go like, I know I want to waste it. I'm going to mm. save it. And now I've got about a 5 billion of them <laughs> in, my, in my briefcase. And then things that people give me, you know, like I've been, a lot of people give me, which I love these, like coins. Have you gotten those? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the, the challenge, challenge coins. coins. 
Yeah, I love those. But then, like yesterday, like my bag tipped over and all these coins spilled out. It looked like I was, you know, a leprechaun who just uh, found the pot of gold. Doubloons. So it's very weird. Hey, I yeah. do. I, I get all the challenge coins from all the municipalities and the fire departments yeah. and the Air National Guard mm-hmm. and the submarine submariners, the submariners. And all. I, I get them all. And I always have this first thought, which is, who's paying for this shit? Am I paying for this shit? <laughs> this shit looks pretty nice. It's pretty detailed. What's that sent me back? That coin. And then my next one is, is okay, I'll give it to my son, who now has oodles of these coins, which just, it's just a nice keepsake. Not that he gives two shits, but I just mean, it's a, it represents a place you went yeah. and the person oh, yeah. that was of service. Yeah, the hand sanitizer on the airplane, which they copiously hand out those Mm. packets. And I'm with, (laughs) so I have two mindsets on that. First is, oh, you got this shit, but still no lemons, number one. (laughs) Number two, I used to- Almond lemon scented. I used to (laughs) dismiss, yes. I used, I'll ring that into my my gin. I used to blow it off. I'd give the, you know, I'd give a move- my move is like when a guy got bucked off a horse and somebody went, went some help nah. up. Like, Get out of here. I can take care of myself, partner. I'm with full Sam Elliott. You know, that was my first move. My second move was I realized when you do the dismissive brush it off, then you get the, oh, this guy's from MAGA country. Yeah, you're I can keep my list. fucking eye on him. <laughs> yeah. And now every time the mask slaps down, it's, oh, I got no. you, buddy. So you should now <laughs> ask for two. Mm-hmm. That'll get you them off your back for the four-hour trip with the mask, and then just put it in the pouch with Feek. There you go. It's brilliant. I think I think it's brilliant because then you know every once in a blue moon I need. But then I don't, I don't like using those because I feel like I'm wasting paper. So then I get gel, and then that's in the thing. So it's just an endless cycle. I can't wait till the pandemic's officially over. Over, so I don't have to do this anymore. I can't <laughs> open. I bought a box with. 700,000 alcohol swipes for your glasses. I I I have 700,000 in a box. I can't open one unless there's two or three pair of glasses to oh, wipe yeah, down. Yeah. Otherwise, it's an I'm utter waste way. of this thing that costs three cents that I bought nine years ago and have a thousand more in my drawer. I'm actually getting worried about both of you. <laughs> Well, the worst is when then you, you offer it to somebody else and that, that thing of like, ew, yeah. <laughs> whatever was on your glasses, I don't want it now on my glasses. Yes, I, so. I, I, will wipe, I will wipe down the face of my phone, but it always calls my mom whenever I do <laughs> oh, no. something that, that yeah. way. Or uh, it's, not, it's not limited to my mom. It's somebody I don't want to talk to. Right. It's, it's never somebody I want mm-hmm. to talk to. Well, do you have the glasses wipe problem I have, which is I get them and I do it, but it never cleans them it just kind of it smudges around the edges and it leaves a film so then i have to have another a cloth to clean it with and then it pulls dirt out from the edges of the lens and then you get these streaks and i go then you got to go through a million of them and i just kind of give up and uh, we should do a new podcast called adam and paul feig talk to your ukrainian refugees (laughs) And they're going, my village is on fire. We're we're walking to Poland. I'm like, you that know when you fly. Bad. So sometimes when I fly first class, they don't have lemon. You know what I mean? And Not that I could see it with the smudge on my glasses. Exactly. They're pushing a stroller with all their belongings right. in it. We're talking about the glass smudging yeah. oh, and the God. humanity of it. Uh, oh, let me give gosh. Paul a uh, plug, not that he needs it, but welcome to Flatch. <laughs> Please, and, oh, I need every plug I can. <laughs> and of, of course, Minx, which is, uh, which I did see in its entirety, or at least the first episode in its entirety. Very well done. Funny, well written, and just well executed. I mean, I, yeah. we're just, you're right back in Los Angeles circa 1970. Mm. I mean, yeah. and how nice to see Jake Johnson again, too, right? And who's so funny. Yeah, he's the, he plays the editor. He's or, the, the, the publisher of a publisher. dollar magazine. Yeah. 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 Where, like do I, where do I know him from? He's really good in this. New Girl. He was on oh, New Girl. Yeah. Forever. Oh, yeah. that's right. Did he grow he's, a beard for this? I'm, yeah, he's, yeah, he's got the look down. He is so cool in this. Yeah, it's a it's a really it's a really good piece, and that's on uh, HBO Max. Uh, Paul, good luck in uh, Hungary, and always good Thank to you. see you again, my friend. Oh, Adam, you are the best. Thanks for having me on. I always loved being on here, and I love listening to you guys. And uh, thank you. It means the world. Thanks, Paul Feig, everyone. All right.
about uh, Freshly before uh, Dan Dunn comes in here oh, and makes all our troubles go away. Freshly. Oh, man. Uh, pre-cooked meals, frozen, tasteless, processed. Don't want that. Freshly. Quality meals uh, without all the hard work. Designed by nutritionists, uh, cooked by chefs, delivered fresh, ready to eat in three minutes. At the end of a long day, takeout shouldn't be your only option. These, uh, freshly, it's, uh, well, let's see, what did I love? Uh, Protein-packed chicken parm was good. Mm. Steak peppercorn was good, especially if you're uh, looking to stay keto. Use the Freshly website or the app. Find the meals that fit your lifestyle, dietary needs and uh, taste as well and your family size choose from over 50 nutritionist designed entrees new meals added weekly skip the grocery and the shopping and the dirty dishes let's go with freshly right dawson stop stressing about dinner right now freshly is offering our listeners 80 dollars off your first four orders when you go to freshly.com slash acs that's 80 dollars off at freshly.com slash acs all right, Dan Dunn is coming in here with his libations, and we'll talk to him right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. All right, Graham from Mississippi, rich man, poor man. LeBron James in L.A. just hit his fifth consecutive three-pointer. Meanwhile, somewhere in the woods of Mississippi, a single wide trailer explodes after something goes wrong with the meth lab. Rich man, poor man, he's on fire. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. All you guys from Mississippi named Graham. Is that where he's from? Is that what he said? I thought. Anyway, that was funny. I didn't know where you're going with that one, but uh, man, it paid off big time dan dunn is here live show what we're drinking with dan dunn and friends that's coming up at the comedy club the uh the stand comedy club sorry new york the stand there you go uh, that'll be friday march 25th so that'll be fun up on stage having some drinks bringing some friends uh so we'll enjoy uh, if you're in the area you should go out and uh, go out and check it out dan how say you hi how you doing? <laughs> Good. I know your back's hurting you. <laughs> I had a bit of a snowboarding accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, uh, what happened? I fell. I'm mm-hmm. not 25 anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to keep up with the kids. I was in Colorado. A little bit of a situation where I hit something. I didn't see it. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then the compound matters. I came back and was like, yeah, let me play in that golf tournament anyway. Oh, mm. boy. And then Friday, I couldn't move. Have you ever had lower back issues? I just, I never did, and I had it over the Christmas break, and it was goddamn devastating. It's horrible, man. And, I, I, and also, let's think about this. Never really thought about this, but all of my friends who were like former jocks and construction guys, able-bodied dudes, the problem is, is they get older And they still think they're who they were. Mm -hmm. And so I fall into that category. It's like I took a a sectional sofa. I took the lion's share of a sectional sofa, like up three stories. I was like, give me that. You know, and I was like, I'll I'll get I'll I'll take this because that's who I was. It's not who I am. (laughs) And I realized, I think about uh, guys like my dad, they would have never done that back then, and so they don't do it now. Right. You know right. what I mean? So it's almost like a hero. they're in preparation to be an old man when they were 23. <laughs> you know, they didn't do any snowboarding then. They don't do any now. They don't do any pickup basketball at the park no. then. They don't do it now. So first things first, they're not missing anything. Mm-hmm. We sit around and have to lament about all the sexual positions we used to be able to get into <laughs> and all the furniture we used to be able to move. My dad doesn't do it, but I realize it's a little bit of a curse being a former guy who did shit. And I've seen my friends go like, give me that. I'll do it. And I'm like, you're fucking 50 something years old. It was exactly the thought that I had. Because the guys I were with, first of all, they were younger and they were on skis, Uh which is a lot faster than the snowboard. It was really, really a lot of powder going on, kind of whiteout conditions. And they were bombers. These guys that don't want to turn, they just want to go real fast. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to keep up. And when I fell, I hit a mogul that I didn't see, mm-hmm. and everything compressed my whole body. And I just remember wiping out, and that was my first thought. I was like, "What 
the fuck are you doing? Because I used to teach snowboarding there in the back in my 20s. Mm-hmm. That was a long, long time ago. <laughs> and that was my first thought. And by the end, all I kept thinking was, please get me off this mountain. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't have any interest in snowboarding ever again. I just want to play golf and lay on a hammock and not do anything that's taxing on my body. I was scared at the end. I've never been that way on the mountain. And by the end, all I kept thinking was, please let me get off without further uh, damaging my ability to make money. Yes. In my, yeah. Like that was, Let, you know, putting that in, in jeopardy. I'm gonna go so, home. I'm going to buy one of those bathtubs with the door in yeah. it. And I the promise bench. God, if you ever make me, if you ever get me into that tub, I'll never come out again. Just get me out of here. I know. I was thinking the other day and, and same with Jimmy Kimmel when he went and played Ted Cruz. So um, in basketball, famously, you know, three years ago, <laughs> it was, we used to do the, I don't know who knows with COVID anymore, but the Father's Day, Jimmy would rent out the softball field at UCLA, the girls' softball. It's like a stadium, Mm -hmm. essentially. And then all the dads and the families would show up and the kids and everything, and and everyone would play softball. And it was like like a good time. And uh, I came off the road on a Sunday, went to the softball thing. Um, Jimmy couldn't be there because he destroyed himself playing (laughs) Ted Cruz. Like, he, he couldn't walk. He was like, I'm, I'm at home. I can't put, put, put my head up. Uh, now, he just, you know, you're not used to stretching yeah. and doing all the warming yeah. up and everything. You just get, you know, that's how I am with softballs. Like, Here we go. Let's get out there. And, and you'll have weird specific pains after softball, like your hands will hurt because yes. you, you haven't gripped a bat in right. a year at most or you're at best. So Jimmy wasn't there. I should have learned the lesson, but I just went headlong into softball. And then when I got home, I was like, oh, t- oh, tonight's the uh, dad's uh, Sunday night dad's local YMCA pickup basketball. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I just took off the cleats and put on the high tops and went fucking next day. I couldn't move. Yeah. I was like, what the, f- what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> it's, it's right up there. And we'll circle it back to booze. It's like, you know, you're supposed to drink a glass of water for every, you know, highball you take in. You never do. Huh? You're supposed to stretch out. You never do. And then you just fucking pay the fiddler the next day. Well, it's all the promises. I've, I've already had a physical therapy f- therapist friend of mine say, here's what you got to do. You got to start strengthening your core. Mm. You're planking and all this. So I'm like, as soon as I get better, that's what I'm going to do. I will plank probably twice. And then that'll be the end of it. <laughs> yeah. And like, I'm done. Because she said, oh, yeah, you got to build up those muscles. You're not using them. And this. And that's what's going to cause it. It's only going to get worse as you get older. Thank God we have booze. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, the, I, I, the ultimate I, muscle relaxant. Yeah. I've comically been planking for the last few weeks. <laughs> have you really? I have. And I'll tell you, it sucks. Yeah. But I'll tell you the, the planking deal you should all make with yourselves. Okay. If in you want to, I just, first things first, do not set that bar up to the point you're, you're, you're not going to do it the next day. Number one. No. Number two. I, Accomplishable goals. <laughs> yeah, I just do three, you know, put your elbows down yeah. and your fists down and plank out, you know, get in that push-up position mm-hmm. with your elbows down. Uh, if you just put your phone in front of you and go, I'll do a minute on, minute off, minute on, minute off, three planks, it's five minutes all in. Is that like all week? It's, it's do it every night. Oh, boy. Five, <laughs> it's five minutes. Like, And if you want to do 30 seconds in between, you can get down to four minutes. But it's literally four minutes. Mm-hmm. Do you have four minutes? Can you sit in front of your TV set and do this for four minutes? And if you make that deal and you kind of keep it on the clock, there's nobody who goes, I don't have four minutes for this or I can't dedicate four minutes. It hurts too much. It, it sucks, but it's four minutes. Yeah. And then there's no Do you no find excuses. it's helping you? Are you feeling the effects of this? Uh, no, like, no. Like, you won't have feel, to because... Like I, I never... Look, it's all it's all like a... Eh, it's just kind of the multivitamin effect. You know, yeah. like, is it working? Does it feel? It's like, I don't know. Man, just do it. Well, and you can't account for when you don't twist your ankle. You know, you don't right. know if it's working okay. or not. Yeah. Well, I, I have good health news, but I'm going to share it. And for reasons that'll be obvious when I share it, mm-hmm. after we've had the drinks. Mm. Oh. I'll share this news. Just happened today. You're pregnant. <laughs> oh, no, no. Muzzle. This is great. No, no. This is, you're going to okay. love this news. You're going to love it. So, All right. So what's our category today? Something. All right. Well, it's, uh, there's a holiday this week. 
St. Patrick's Day, mm-hmm. St. Patty's is known. And first of all, I want to say up front to everybody, if you're going St. Patty's, it's two D's, not two T's. Yeah. Right? Mm. Everybody knows this, okay? Really? So, uh, yeah. I don't know that. Patty's. P-A-D-D. Patty's is a hamburger. Do you call it the Patty Wagon, Brian? But Patrick is with the T, I know, but they say Patty I'm no expert. I am not either. The letter's telling you. So I brought in four spirits. Three of which are Irish whiskeys, and one is a little bit of a surprise that you can celebrate your St. Patrick's Day with. And these are things you've, uh, one or two you might have heard of, and a couple that I definitely did not. All right, now don't pour too much, because <laughs> I'm not throwing away booze. Okay, <laughs> oh, yeah, so the them. one, just a taste. The one glass we can use well, for all more. three Irish down, we can pour our own. Yeah. The one glass we can use for all three Irish whiskeys, the other one you'll use for the, the okay. other thing. Okay. Right. Tell you about. okay, so I'm going to do this, and here I'm going to pay. You Thank can pour you. as much as you want. I'm going to take a little ice cube here, too, for this one, and I'm going to throw that in there if you guys want some ice. And this is Limavati. This is a single-barrel Irish whiskey, okay? Now, this is from Northern Ireland. Limavati is a town in Northern Ireland. It comes from the Gaelic term, the leap of the dog. Not to be confused with the hair of the dog, which is what mm-hmm. you'll need if you have too much of the <laughs> This is a distillery that dates back to 1750. It's one of the oldest in Ireland. Of course, like every other distillery in Ireland, it went away. Mm. Uh, and then it was resurrected in 2021 by a guy named Daryl McNally, who was at Bush Mills for a long time and Dublin Liberty Distilleries. Ooh. Turns out his family... His ancestors were the Limavati uh, distillers. So mm. he brings this thing back. He partnered up with Whistle Pig, our friends from Whistle oh. Pig Rye, to bring nice. this brand back in 2021. They came out of the gate way hot. They won gold medals from the Beverage Tasting Institute, from Whiskeys of the World, San Francisco World Spirits, everybody. They're winning with this. What do you guys think of this it? This is delicious. Yeah. And very drinkable. This is a hit right off the yeah. What's the uh, alcohol content on this? this the alcohol the content point? of this is something. It's on that bottle. What do you got, Brian? Ooh, uh, four, uh, 40%. It so, is 40%. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's basic. 50 bucks. Oh, no, it's a box. Sorry, it's written very faintly. 46%, 92 proof. So oh, 92 so that's proof, $50 octane. on this. I think it's a very fruity, floral, approachable yeah. whiskey that... Chicks um, would like this. But here's the thing that Indeed made, we do. What's interesting about this is this is a, a small batch whiskey. Triple distilled, that's what they do. Copper pots, that's what they do with most Irish whiskeys are triple distilled, which mm. sets them apart from scotch, which is twice distilled, generally. I, I had a thought that will dovetail into mm. uh, whiskey and rye and mm-hmm. Paul mm. Feig and flying and mm-hmm. gin and airplanes and vodka and no citrus. I, when I come home, will have a, in the evening, we'll have like a rye or whiskey or something like that. Um when I'm traveling and flying first class, it's always a vodka soda. And then I realize all I do is complain about no lemon wedge. But if you got the whiskey, you don't, yeah. <clears throat> you don't need the lemon wedge. You know what I realize? What? It's 9.15 in the morning. <laughs> I, I, I'm living in a judgment-free <laughs> com- cab cabin here. Yeah, yeah. I don't like skies. that. When I, you know, I have to sit next to August. <laughs> and August, that motherfucker... It's one thing, look, it's one thing to sit next to someone else who's having a cocktail. Mm -hmm. It's a much, you know, Dan, you and I should hit the road. Mike not only doesn't order a cocktail, he orders what a nine-year-old would order. (laughs) He, He gets a... He gets a ginger ale, the ginger ale, and a cranberry, yes. and he starts pouring them <laughs> both together. Or apple juice, yes, oh. yes, that's and, his thing. And he, he always true. pisses off the, the the flight attendant because they're like, "What would you like?" And he wants two things, yeah. and then it's, there's not enough room mm-hmm. with the little mini thing and no, the hand handrest there, and he's bouncing his stuff. Then he pulls an all timer, Chris, uh, backstage at the at the club in KC. Do you remember that one? I remember Sprite and ginger ale. He now he's mixing. See that. They had Sprite and ginger ale. Now I said, Mike, do you have to fucking mix? Like I, uh, I get uh, whole milk and skim milk, and I put them together. It's like so just get two percent. Open no, a can not. and drink out of it. <laughs> Stop mixing everything. But now he's drinking like a nine-year-old, and I'm drinking like a forty-nine-year-old, and I don't want the telltale. Yeah. It ain't apple juice. Yeah. So then you go with the clear. Mm, and attempt that's not why. to be. 
judged. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. All I remember from August backstage in Kansas City was they said one of the guys comes out and goes, well, Adam, want any food in between shows? And he said, oh, no, you know, we we ate, we went to barbecue, we had a Z-Man, we're good. And he goes, okay, no problem. Well, 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 well let's not be hasty with the leaving. You know, oh, somebody right. else might want something. And yeah. then he demands better <laughs> beer. Right. Yes. <laughs> All right. This is uh, so this, this is, is delightful. Yeah, this is yeah. This is wonderful. You're not gonna, I don't think you're going to mix anything with this. It's aged in ex bourbon cask and then finished in PX sherry cask. So that's where you're going to get that nice. that sort of caramel, the honey notes really that are coming good. through on this. It's I, it's a delicious whiskey. I, I'm, I'm really happy about this one again. Limavadi. That's L I M A V A D Y because I don't want to be blown up on social media. What was that you had again? I just spelled it for you. <laughs> Look it up, okay? Limavati, wow. that's a good one. Now, you know, Dan, I like the cut of your jib. One of these days you should come out with us when we go to Vegas. We had a great time there last time. You yeah, we really missed you. Fit, you were missed. People were drinking, having oh, a good time. You would have fit right in. <laughs> hey, Chris, next time we go to Vegas, tell Dan, yeah. man. You were remiss not to invite him to begin with. Yeah. yeah. It was a I, mistake. You know, man, he was too busy doing that show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I all I remember is when we went around after a heck taste of other stuff, which was awesome. I swear I wasn't that drunk. We did have whiskey that um, tasted different depending on which kind of heavy metal they played it. Or oh, we're talking about blackened. Yes, yeah. we, which we've had we've yeah. had in here on the great. show before. Yeah, yeah, they play music. The sonic to it. enhancement yes. that they use on it. Yeah, we went and did that. Where were you then, Adam? You didn't come with us. At the I point. had. He was in the pool. I had been yeah, a hasty. The, drink, the kickstand down on the chair. I was yelling, "Drink from your helmet!" All I remember, the nickel slots. All I remember is walking up, and Taffer had just gotten off. And first of all, he's been on my show several times. And I said, "Hey, man!" And he goes, "Nice to meet you." Yep. I'm like, oh, "That's sure. always nice." Sure. Yeah, good to see you again. Uh, at the fifth time he's been on my show, nice to meet me. And he had this weird look on his face, like. Maybe I don't know what was going on, and then I figured out very quickly what was going on once I jumped on the show. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I see what's happening here." Well, look, you can't Dan closed out the show. You for can't us. plan. Someone's you, abdicated their duties tonight. Hey, you you can't. First off, I was overserved, <laughs> and I, I talk that. more about it. But there's a lawsuit. <laughs> Talk right, Number yeah. one, it's a gag order. Number two, you can't go to Vegas and start your whiskey crawl. <laughs> Three hours before the mics heat up, that 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 just didn't work. I didn't want to be rude and not taste everyone's offerings. Oh, it worked. You know, you gotta do it. Well, mm-hmm. we, we, I'm sure you'll be back uh, for the next one, right? Which did we do one? <laughs> there's another one. In, oh, there's there's another, another one in the fall. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll see what happens there. Okay, next up, we're gonna do a little something different here. Instead of just doing Irish whiskey, so I, you got a second class. Use that class mm-hmm. for this. This is called Hercules Mulligan. Rum and rye. Oh, this is a ready to drink. You're going to want to put some ice in here, Gina. Here like from a, Hamilton, Hercules yeah, Mulligan. He was right. a tailor. That's exactly he was right. a spy. That's exactly right. That's he, why that's I know that. Real yeah. life person, Hercules that's Mulligan, amazing. was an Irish tailor, came over here, and he became a hero during the Revolutionary War. Say that he was maybe the primary influence on Alexander Hamilton. Right. Yes. Um, I've, I've never heard of rum and rye. This was a hugely popular thing back at that time. And then they would also add in a little bit of, it's equal parts rum and rye, and then a little bit of fresh ginger and bitters too. So this is something that's ready wow. to drink. Put it on ice. Again, Hercules Mulligan. 43% alcohol by volume. Hercules by Mulligan was a member of the Sons of Liberty. <laughs> Uh, Mm -hmm. very badass group of people. They knocked down a statue of King George III in New York City, melted that shit down, and made bullets out of it to kill the British. Wow. That's what he did. Badass. Yes, and Alexander Hamilton actually lived with him and his family and would listen to Hercules Mulligan, and they say basically he turned Hamilton into a revolutionary. And by the way, is there more of a badass name than Hercules Mulligan? Mm. Yeah. So this like stuff is great. Boxer I love this stuff. The, century. Right. the gayest of all porn <laughs> yeah. names. Yeah, I know. We've come su- such a such a long way because I just heard a story that you know, they successfully got uh, Roosevelt's uh, statue taken down from the front of the Natural History oh, Museum good. in New York. Like the guy with the horse oh, and uh, we got that down. So then they went and put it somewhere and put a tarp yes. over it and now and you can find this Chris. I think they're planning they're planning on moving it to the Teddy Roosevelt, you know, museum, right. the history, wherever he's, wherever he's from, and now people are pissed. They want it destroyed, not not to make bullets and okay. fight just the British, destroyed. just just destroyed. We mm. should make bullets. We should. This, so this tastes like spice cake. Oh, it's great, I was right? So say. this was launched. So this actually oh, was. Oh, well, hold on a second. It's a holiday drink. This is delicious. I don't know if I told you, but I talked to Stallone about bullet rye for a long time. Okay. At uh, at a party, 
and he made that movie called Bullet to the Head or something, okay. something like that a few years ago. <laughs> I, you know that, Chris, you know the pod we need to be doing, you talk to super successful people about how people f- have no respect for them and fuck them over and everything. He was like, I talked to the bullet rye people. And I was like, I told him I'm making this bullet to the head thing. And like, do you want to have your product? You know, and they're like, they told him to fuck off. <laughs> And he couldn't, he was like, I can't believe that they, that they said that. And if you talk to Stallone, that's about half his conversations. You know, I was the backstage at the fucking Oscars and Matt Damon just walked right past me, banged me to the shoulder and just kept walking. Like, it's like. Got a it's, chip. No respect. What do we think the Rotten Tomato score is on Bullet to the Head? God damn. I didn't, I didn't see it. I, it might not be, I don't know. Come on. It the can't. Fresh? 40. Oh, I'll go 29. 29? Yeah. Well, Chris can, can look it up. 17. 17? <laughs> 36. Give him a fighting chance. Yeah. I mean, anytime. If Stallone puts on 20 pounds, sure. he'll get a couple of points. Okay. Oh, All right. Okay. 45. All right. 45. All right. Higher with the off. critics than the audience. You would not would not think that. All right. All so, right. Let's sorry. talk about this amazing mess. So this thing, this thing launched in... At the end of 2019, so this was basically a pandemic success story. Uh, Flaviar, the, the direct-to-consumer club, they launched it. It became a big hit, and then they decided, you know what? Let's let's roll this thing out and start selling it in stores. Again, it's 50-50 blend of uh, Caribbean-age rum and American rye whiskey with a little bit of ginger and bitters in there. Again, it's, it's very – it's ready to drink. Just well, like Brian – like Brian said, it does seem like a great holiday drink. Yeah, Absolutely. Put this in your eggnog. Yeah. 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 38 it's bucks fabulous. a bottle. Well, that's nice. 38 bucks. It's easy to do it. One double gold at the prestigious mm. San Francisco World Spirits Competition, mm. which Dan Dunn used to be a judge. Uh, and I, you know what, man? I love anything that's, if you can just open the bottle and pour it and it tastes like a cocktail already made, that's easy. Because yeah. now... Now that COVID's it's over, right? it's kind sure. of over. I'm on the go now. I got places to go. So. I love the name. I love the taste. I love the story behind it. It's a good. It's a good one. Hercules Mug. All right, now we're gonna move on. Hold on, update. Nope. Oh. There's a petition to have the Roosevelt statue melted down or scrapped <laughs> rather than moved to a new home. Signed by various uh, New York academics and artists, because goddamn, they should be setting policy for <laughs> everything. We wouldn't have this whole gas problem if these guys were in charge. And uh, but the plan is to move it to the Roosevelt Presidential Library in North Dakota. So. Can't he just have it since it's of him and it's going to the museum? It's problematic. Gina. Okay, all right. You should know. I know. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't want to waste you this. Know, the, I love this. You know we. You know we're gonna have to. I think what we're going to have to do from this day forward when it comes to statue carving, we just need black, indigenous, gay, lesbian sculptors. Yes. Oh, you know, sure. because then in 40 years, when my kids are my age and wanting to complain about everything and some fucking asshole wants to take everything down, they go, well, what about yeah, the what black, about what about the <laughs> bi-curious <laughs> lesbian transitioning sculptress who was trying to... That one's fine. Uh, sculptress. They'll, <laughs> they'll pass it. There is a sculptress, isn't there? Yeah. That's I don't the like, name. I don't like statues in general. I don't know why we have them. Except the Rocky statue in Philly. Sure. Yeah. Stallone loves that. He ain't complaining about that, is he? Except when they moved no, it off. No, he was. When they moved it off the top, because it used to be on the top steps of the art museum, and they're like, yeah, no, we're going to move this. Oh, he complained about that. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he was very upset about that one. So, Said, uh, um, Yeah, the, well, I think he was telling me it was for sale, and then he bought it. Oh. What, the statue? A either the statue or the you know runner up or no the, the statue is still there the, the hero moved, statue they moved it to the side of there's it's in this little plaza on the side of the Philadelphia Art Museum mm-hmm. it, at one point they had it at the top of the sure. steps because that's everybody runs the steps but then they were like this is a world class art museum and we have <laughs> Sylvester Stallone at the greeting everybody they so they be moved so it. lucky yeah. Chris what was the story <laughs> it, it came up for sale I swear to God or, or or the backup statue or the wax mold or something he bought something all right oh sorry I got a poor <laughs> this one is a little higher right, octane so I this think. was the Hercules Mulligan now we're going to move back to some Irish whiskey Smoky. to our friends from Teeling I've had Teeling in here before but this is a this is a new one that I wanted to bring in that I just think is fantastic called Teeling Black Pits, Black Pits, and oh, Teeling, no. Teeling, like every other Irish whiskey we talked about earlier, was around, and then it went away. The mm-hmm. brand was resurrected in 2012. Black Pits is a, a section of Dublin 
that was known for all the uh, malting barley in that region. So that's what they named it after. This is a uh, this is matured in ex bourbon and ex sautern which is a French white wine. I don't have to tell Adam that. He knows Ooh, that. No, sure, white wine. Sure. Teeling has had a lot of success <clears throat> with the Sauterne cask finished. They did one. Uh, their 24-year-old single malt was named the world's best single malt Oof. at the World Whiskey Awards in 2019, which is probably the most prestigious whiskey awards. Is and there something to it being much lighter than the other one? Obviously, the, the color. Yeah. This yeah. one? It's mossy, no, right? No, it's very light and mm. colored. I don't mean mm. taste. I mean, mm. like physical Well, appearance. that's the thing. This is a peated... Irish whiskey, uh -huh. that is a very rare thing in, in Irish really? whiskey. They don't, they don't, Pete, that's something you find a lot with scotch. You do not oh, find this. Okay. So what they do is they, they use smoke from the peat mm -hmm. to dry the barley during the malting process. And again, very unusual uh, for Irish whiskey. And I, I Good. like the subtlety of this whiskey with that smoke on top it's of it. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 yeah, this is a, a sophisticated whiskey. I think, yeah. It's, yeah, it's very nice. Uh, sophisticated whiskey. Sophisticated whiskey. Price point on this one. Let's see, good guess. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's 46% uh, alcohol by volume, which is uh, 92 proof, I guess. Is it? it would yeah. be. Yeah. I'm going to uh, say 60. It's good. I, I got a, oh, uh, gas, geez, I have no idea. Uh, it sounds very exotic. 65. <laughs> Brian. That sounds. Oh, this all sounds right to me. I'll go under a fifty-nine. Eighty-six bucks. Oh, yeah. Eighty-six. That I get is it. one of their more exclusive uh, expressions from the Teeling brand, and uh, I I find it's I, I because you don't encounter peated uh, Irish whiskey very often. I think it's it's a unique product, and you're going to see a lot more of that because now that Irish whiskey has come back in full force. They have to figure out ways mm. to distinguish themselves, and they want to sell and sell. So it's like, all right, new expression, new expression, new this, new this. Tell me, uh, yeah. sorry, tell me, tell me what you think of this. I sort, I have the same mindset with the uh, rise and whiskeys that I tend to have with sausages, which is the darker, <laughs> on. the darker, the better. I don't like okay. the, I, I, I don't like the very light sausage i like the dark mm -hmm. brats mm -hmm. seem to have more flavor and paprika and like more pepper like more more stuff going on i i find i and i kind of find that way with my rye like i i feel like the darker i can see it coming through that bottle the more i'm gonna like it thoughts well you know this isn't rye right no i do okay. i right. do know right. that i, was, I do right. know I that like, i was confused right. here for a second yeah uh well i mean rye is a spicy grain to begin with and it's mm -hmm. got a little bit more oomph to it i think mm -hmm. than wheat for in, for instance but uh yeah i mean a lot of that comes from how long the barrel aging is going on though because that's where it, if it's getting how much extraction you're getting from the wood is is what's also going to give it that dark rich flavor that you like that's coming mainly from the aging not mm -hmm. not from the source yeah. if you just took but rye off the still didn't even put it in Be wood. Clear, right? What you're gonna, yeah, everything's clear when it comes off the still, yeah. And and it's gonna, it's gonna taste spicier. It's probably mm -hmm. you know than certainly than bourbon, corn. With bourbon, you're gonna get that sweet flavor that you get. The wheat, you're gonna get it. It's a little bit, but rye, spicy. But again, where you're getting that extra uh, darkness that you mm -hmm. like it is mm -hmm. from the wood. Well, I think to Adam's point, it's it's sort of a surprise when you taste this and get that smokiness because I think we equate that with a darker color and it's it's really it, it's very layered it's very mm. nice yeah and the, i think it's great yeah the peatiness is uh, it, it's weird the mossy but it's it's also really good and i feel like if if it's too mossy i normally don't like it but if it's just got the hints mm. of it we had a couple in here before I, I maybe a year or two ago i think i did some scotch didn't i brought in a couple of island malt I still have and i don't think you liked scotch. we had um Aramnum based or one of those or Octomore, one of the big mm. peat bombs out of Isla from Scotland, yes. and I remember you didn't like that too much. Well, sadly, I, the only thing, only offering I really wouldn't drink would be Snoop Dogg's cotton candy. Indigo, Indigo. I mean, Indigo. Indigo. In, Indigo. <laughs> right, that'd be the only one. Strawberry sadly. flavored vape water. Sadly, you drank a bottle and half of that in Vegas. <laughs> That's right. You I remember? did. You, know, you yeah. wouldn't know. <laughs> Well, not at the okay, not yeah. at the beginning though, Brian. Oh no, far from it. You yeah. were holding it over your head at the end of the night. That's right. Going, I'm the big dog. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and, by the end, and by the end of the night, he means eight o'clock. Yeah. 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 End of the night for him. You mean, when right? the sun yeah. started yeah. to go down. Yeah. Like, well, listen. I look. 
Let me tell you my superpower. <laughs> Please. I realize that once I'm good and lit up, that from this point on, no good can come of this. Mm. I'm going to go eat some shit mm-hmm. that I wish I hadn't eaten mm-hmm. when I woke up. I'm going to go have some conversations that I wish I could take back. There's just nothing good Hi, Mom. from this point. It's a law of diminishing returns. <laughs> right. right. And I'm not really going to enjoy it because I'll be in such a state. Yeah, you won't remember So, that. like, I figured out that if it's 9.15 and you're feeling like I could turn in right now and I don't even need to take my pants off. No. Then, uh, By all means. Discretion, better part of valor, so yeah. they always say. <laughs> How are the VR goggles going, Dan? Uh, I, got, I got a different story for you today. What is you'll that? never what think is You'll never story? think of VR. Let's, let's finish this. Save it for the Next news. Whiskey. Uh, <laughs> the final story. one, I figured we had to have a classic on here, so we, I'm going to go with one of the old classics. Tullam or Dew. Tullam mm. or Dew. You've brought that in before, right? I, think I, I, don't, think I, I don't think I've ever had Tullamer do oh. in here before, no. But here, this is founded in 1829 in the town of Tullamer. Uh, the do comes from Daniel E. Williams, who is a guy who managed the distillery and did such a great job that they've slapped his name on the bottle. Uh, this is one of the most award-winning whiskeys in the world. It's the second largest selling Irish whiskey in the world. Mm. We all know what the number one selling Irish whiskey in the world is, right? We do. It's Jameson. Jameson. Which by, is insane. <laughs> by a long shot. I yeah. mean, this is, tell them or do is the second largest. They, they did uh, 1.5 million cases uh, last year. Jameson, to put that in perspective, did 8 million cases wow. last year. They crushed but, the market. It's yeah, crazy. They, I mean, well, yeah. And so, uh, but this is a traditional malt whiskey, which uses, it uses three different styles of whiskey in it, which is great. Um, uh, you're going to get this. The first one is the traditional malt whiskey. That's 100% malted barley in here. That's mm-hmm. part of the blend. The second one is the pot still whiskey, which is so prevalent in Ireland. Uh, that's a mix of malted and unmalted mm. barley that's been distilled and fermented three times. And then the last source is the grain alcohol, which is just probably corn or wheat. And they blend that all together for Tullam or Dew, and it is, it's a classic. I it's mean, it's really smooth. It's, yeah. it's the, sort of the epitome of Irish whiskey, right? It's yeah. smooth. There's no head on it at all. Like mm. you can inhale when yeah. you're sipping, yeah. and it doesn't it's, even, it's like you're drinking water. It's a delightful whiskey. And, and here's what happens I think in, there's so many options out there now that sometimes you forget about. The old standby, man. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is a classic, and there's a reason it's been around for so long. Is it's it is very very approachable. I, mean, I don't like to use the term easy drinking because that sounds wimpy, but it's a very approachable whiskey. <laughs> this is what my dad used to drink uh, before it did him in. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, what? Just kidding. What an endorsement! It did not kill my him. My dad's drink was Still tap alive. water. <laughs> did uh, twice distilled. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you think of it, Brian? You're the I, I never your whiskey. I mean, uh, you tend I think you tend to like whiskeys that are more well less in your face. I agree, and uh, Irish whiskey is the whiskey I know least about. There's a nice education. Tell Tullamore, it, Tullamore is um, like you said, approachable. Like like um, affordable is to cheap. You know, approachable is to easy drinking. Yeah. They're all saying mm-hmm. the same thing. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, it goes down smooth. Man. Speaking of affordable. Twenty four dollars. Oh my God! Wow. Twenty four bucks. So if you're, you know, you're looking to get your drink on, you don't want to break the bank. It's tell them or do. I know we generally wouldn't use this as a palate cleanser, but I have to admit I've been going back to the Hercules in the middle of every the tasting. Mulligan. Yeah, yeah me it's, too. Re- it's really good stuff. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's not. Once you hit the Hercules and you get the tell them or do, you don't feel. Like it's that much, right? Well, it's a, it's a completely different spirit. Yeah. I mean, you're you know, to be fair, this is, that's a rye whiskey and a rum combined with ginger with bitters. Oh yeah, yeah. It, there's it, a ton going on. Yeah, it's, I'm just saying, uh, the Tullamore Dew feels a little watered down or something, a little easy. A little, yeah, I mean, it is. That's what I'm on. saying. When I say it's traditional Irish style, yeah. though, that was what Irish whiskey has always been. It's always been probably wonder, the lightest of the whiskeys. I feel like. This would be a good one to make uh, Irish coffee with. Oh, sure. Yeah. Versus something and, that's a little more complex. And had we started with this one, we'd go, this is the standard. But yeah, after Dan. all these crazy coffee. I'm not you. producing. I but I'm just saying, I like Tell it. Me. I like it, but it's so 
super duper approachable. I know because what you're of trying to say. You're wishing had. Paul Sanguinetti was here again, <laughs> don't you? Just oh, say it. You mean the dream boat, I, Paul Sanguinetti? I thought about bringing him in, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Am I the only one who found the first one to be the most enjoyable? Yes. Okay. I mean, no. Oh, I mean, oh, I agree. The first one? What did we <laughs> have? Uh, the blue label. The, the, oh, the limb of That was really nice. Really delicious. Yeah, really yeah. fantastic. Nice. Yeah. So, Chris, did you find out anything about uh, Stallone's statue? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, so the and, three, and put it on the screen. I'm, well, I, I was going to wait forget. till break to just to, to give you, because oh, I didn't okay. know exactly what you want, because you said something about the mold. But So there are three that were made, one at the Steps the in, Phil- oh, okay. in yeah. Philly. The second one was at the San Diego Hall of Champions Sports Museum in San Diego until it mm. closed in 2017. The statue was then put up for auction and purchased by an anonymous buyer, who was later to be revealed as Sylvester Stallone. Ah! And then in 2006, the guy realized the mold was starting to, to decay. Oh. So he, he made one more edition of the statue, put up for auction on eBay three times between uh, 2002 and 2005 with a starting bid of $5 million. Didn't cover the reserve. Then $3 million. Oh. And then $1 million <laughs> to raise funds for uh, charity. And then it is currently exhibited at the Schoenberg Studio Gallery in Denver, Colorado. Wow. Mr. Yeah, so Stallone did buy the he statue. Did. He bought the second one, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Can I tell you my health news, by the way? Please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. please. So I know everybody's going to hear this. It was a big, exciting day for me today. You ever have a skin tag? No, but... Do you I'm, know what they I'm are? Know what they are. You know what yeah. they are. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you the story, and this is why I'm telling it now, after we've already imbibed. Um, so I got... <laughs> so, like, sort of around the beginning of COVID, I noticed that I had, like, a, a skin tag... On your taint. <laughs> How do you notice? How would you notice that? Because it sat down there a lot during COVID. I was feeling around that area much more than usual. So between the and it was like not small, right? You know, it was like I'm neurotic enough. So I'm like, oh, this thing is here. Yeah. And now like they if I meet somebody, out of well, it. if they meet, if they meet, I meet somebody, and they're like, what's this fucking yeah. thing, right? Yeah, sure. So, but COVID, so you can't go get it taken. And then I'm like, I'm not going to go get it taken off anyway, because that would mean like. An esthetician would have to yeah. see my asshole, or right? My, you know, mm-hmm. take full Brazilian. Yeah. So I start looking into different things, and one was like a topical thing that I tried. Put it on, burn the shit out of me, right? I was like, "Ow, I'm not using that anymore. This is not good." And then, so I kind of gave up, and I'm like, "Well, maybe it'll just go away." And it wouldn't go away. It was actually getting a little bit bigger. Oh, my wow. skin tag, right? It's like almost you know, like a second dick going on down there at this point. So I found this thing on Amazon. I'm sorry. I'm just very excited. Please. Today. It happened today. So I found this thing on Amazon and it's like a, a pen and it's got little tiny rings, like rubber rings. And you put it on there and it's a whole contraption and you press it against your skin and you push it. And it, the ring goes to the base of the skin tag Cuts and chokes, it chokes off the skin tag. Right. Yeah. Oh so I put this on on Friday mm-hmm. and it, and th- and it, it starts to change colors. It's not. It's gross. It's completely gross. I'm telling you this. But then I'm starting to think, well, maybe it's not going to work because it's you know it on Friday, and I'm like, it's still there. And then today, when I woke up, it was gone. It wow. had fallen off. It was totally gone. I was I was so happy. Chris, can we uh, sanitize that seat? <laughs> and- <laughs> I, I'm saying, it, like, whenever you find a product that actually works, like, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is the best. Pro- I want to, I want to rep, I don't even know the name of it. I just want to represent this product. The skin tag's gone. All my, I was so insecure about this yeah, skin Shaq's tag. Yeah, Shaq's already you, picked Gina up just this, vomited. This well, deal. it makes me yeah. very, like, queasy. Did you consult a doctor before no, you? No, you don't do that. Amazon. You don't need the doctor. Doctor Amazon. It works on Amazon. Uh, I fine. think there's a version, there's a version of this for, like, cows and... Pigs and stuff like pigs, where he put the rubber band around the scrotum sac, and it, you know, the blood Chokes gets cut off, off yeah. and then eventually just withers and falls off. Like there, there's a oh, they farm do that version of this. Oh, that's cruel. Yes, but the idea is to cut off. You know, the blood's the life. That's what's growing yeah. it. You cut the blood off. I would argue you could have saved a bunch of money with some dental floss. <laughs> Depending on no, how I dexterous tried that. you are. You know, it's between my balls and my ass. It's hard to get down there. So, no, I tried that. I was, like, trying to tie something. I'm like, it's not working. And I would get really frustrated. And then um, the other thing about it, just so everybody knows, not not painful. Right? Mm-hmm. It was not really? Pain. You don't even feel it. You don't even feel it. I was worried what was going to happen because they're like, it's going to fall off. And I'm like, well, isn't there going to be a 
an okay. opening. Because one time I got drunk, maybe like a year oh, ago. Week. And I got year a year ago, and I got drunk, and this thing was there, and I had a, someone was coming over in a couple of days, mm. and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna cut this fucking thing off with. Uh, toenail oh, clippers. I'm not joking. Oh, and Gina's then, gone. And Gina's then Gina's throwing up now. And then I was like, at last minute, that's I thought a, better of it. Because like, like that again. could bleed. And I'm like, what if I get an infection? How do you explain this at the doctor? You know, like, yeah. oh, I just went in with clippers. So I thought it was All hopeless. Right. Let's explore the someone's coming over. <laughs> well, yeah. Because you know, what? A, well, what I'm afraid is they go for like the they, tickle. They go for the taint tickle. And then they feel that thing. And then they're like, I would be grossed out. I'd be like, what so the they're coming over with the. Kama Sutra and a miner's helmet. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Can't you just fuck like everyone else, Dan? To do the tickle. The ladies like well, to do the tickle. Nobody does the you tickle. Do the the tickle. ladies like to no, do they the don't. tickle. Gina. I mean, if you want it, but it's not like I'm dying it's to get in there. It's not part of your repertoire. Yeah, no. Like fade away like well, Kobe. I knew it was there, and I would be insecure about it because I would be afraid that if if my that my get. friend were to notice it, that it would turn turn her off, and then that would be the end of it. I get that. I, I, first off, you totally can always do the sack comb over. <laughs> I think I may be the pioneer of that. The sack comb over. You get some taint issues, a carbuncle <laughs> down there. Just go ahead and just comb that right on over. You know what I mean? No one's the wiser. It's number you mean one. like puppetry of the penis, like pull it back? Yeah, just pull it and kind of tuck it and tease the hair out a little bit and get the full come <laughs> over effect. Washington style. Well, it was even getting in the way of my grooming routine because I have these man, the manscaper, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So you go down and then I would get worried that if I was using the manscaper, yeah. that catches that skin tag. Yeah. That's going to be a mess and it can be painful and mm-hmm. infection. You can't so this it. thing. It's a tiny little rubber. It's a little it's rubber so band. little. It's and you... It's on like a pen, and you got to mount it on the pen, and then you press it against your skin, and it, but it how latches d- onto the base. How does one view that? I mean, I had a mirror. Funny you should ask that. No, no, this is <laughs> how I had you to squat over me. This is how I, I had this to do it. This is this how I had going. to do it. I got on the bed, and I had to put a couple of pillows, prop up, the, prop up the ass a little bit, so oh, I get the right yeah, viewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to push my balls and my my thing aside sure. so I could get, and then I had the mirror positioned right, I had it next to my thing so I could see it, yeah. and then I had to go, and it, it was a little bit bigger, so it barely fit inside the pen thing. Mm-hmm. It was a thing. If you would have yeah. walked in while I was doing this, <laughs> I wish I had. it would have looked, what is he doing? Is this a new way to inject heroin or something in your taint? Some That's guys don't want anything to repeat his guest in the air. Well, no, I'm just saying, I was so, like, today I woke up and I went, I reached down because I wanted to see, I was like, it's like Christmas. Like it fell off. And mm. then did you find it? Oh, yeah. God. It's shriveled <laughs> up a lot, too. Put it under your pillow. With a skin t- <laughs> it's with the mold of rock. I got 20 bucks from the skin tag fairy. <laughs> wow. No, I. Harrowing story. I get it. I've hey. had to use the mirror before. Okay. You'll see. You get old. You'll see what happens. You yeah. get skin tags. I never mm-hmm. had them. I never had them in my 30s. Mm-hmm. But you get them. So it never opened the skin. It would just like no, right the off the surface. thing just fell off. It was Amazing. like it was never there. That's cool. It's a miracle invention. What, what do they call that thing? The thing I got, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to look. And nobody's. We found we found one. I don't know if this is the exact one he used, but this is the same. This is not yeah. a sponsor skin situation. Tag. Target skin ca- tag It's called removal. the Kel- yeah. Kelanol 2-in-1 Skin Tag Remover. Fuck. K-E-L-I-N-U-L. I have no affiliation with them other than I fucking love this company. <laughs> mm-hmm. They got that. That thing's been... I've been feeling that every night. Because I would sit there and I just... It bothered me that it was there. And I could mm. not focus on it. You ever have something you can't not focus yeah, on? Yeah, you know, two of the This now. Weird. Yeah. This. Genius. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. Mazel tov. All right. Let me tell you about uh, <laughs> Better Help. <laughs> Sorry. Perfect timing. Yes, please. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Many of us will uh, drop everything to help someone we care about, but how often do we help ourselves? That's right. Mm -hmm. You go to the gym, you get a massage, you do all these things, you take care of yourself, but how about your mind, man? That's the best asset you have. Invest in yourself like you do with others. BetterHelp Online Therapy, offering video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to uh, be on camera or see anyone you don't want on camera if you don't want to. More affordable than in-person therapy. Get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Take care of yourself, people, with 
BetterHelp, right, Dawson? See why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. And Adam Carolla Show listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Carolla. That's Better, H-E-L-P dot com slash Carolla. I like uh, Dan Dunn because he's an open cheek. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with the news right after this. News with Greg. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. Weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad. Stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden. Come on out. Meet news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. We're drinking great whiskey. We're hearing about uh, harrowing acts on Dan's body. I'm not going to start with what I thought I was going to start with. I'll just tell you that there are now officially journalists being injured and killed in Ukraine. And it is uh, it is horrific. And we'll have more news on that another day. But let's talk about Elon and Putin. They're, um, Elon's challenging him on Twitter. The Tesla CEO and SpaceX founder Elon Musk wrote to his 77 million Twitter followers on Monday that he's challenging Vladimir Putin to single combat and wagering Ukraine. In the tweet, he said, I hereby challenge Vladimir Putin to single combat combat stakes are Ukraine. He tagged the Kremlin's official account and asked, do you agree to this fight? Fox News reports that the tweet prompted a nearly immediate response from the head of Russian space agency who has traded words with Musk in the past. This is what he said. You little devil are still young. Compete with me, weakling. It would only be a waste of time. Overtake my brother first. Ukrainian Vice Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov then chimed in, said, I'm sure that Elon Musk can send Putin to Jupiter, and he's not playing because he's been running a fundraiser to launch Putin into space for weeks. It is weird that, you know, no matter how advanced and technologically advanced and who could be more technologically advanced than Elon or, you know, the first people to put something into orbit, yeah. maybe a monkey or a woman mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it still kind of comes down to some weird baseline. A duel at dawn. Who kick whose ass? Yeah. Yeah, like, it's just people come up and have a problem with everybody, but not really Mike Tyson, you know, sure. because he, they, he could punch them in a, in a world of high tech and mm-hmm. digital everything. There still comes down to this visceral sort of, how big is that guy's biceps? Yeah. And could I take him? And it's weird that that's such a big part or still a part when... They're hardwired for that. You got people flying drones, you know, the the the, the missiles that we launch are, are being guided by some nerd in Florida who's using a joystick. Indeed. But somehow that guy's got guns, yeah. you know, still factors in. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And Primal. that's not going away. Primal. I, w- I would wager to say you don't want that to go away. Well, my feeling, as I always say, is the more backward your nation is, the more primal Mm -hmm. you are. Like, Mm -hmm. think about how you treat women, how you treat gays, how you, your thoughts about transgender Mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever the progressive. Mm -hmm. So it's like the worse you are as a nation, the more primal you are, the more you're affected by. The, the Barack Obama, that guy's 150 pounds. I could kick his ass. Like right. he doesn't care what kind of army or arsenal or right. anything he's on top of. This weird primal thing. Can I and kick a, that guy's ass. And unfortunately, it, it's like when we're, what we should do. Like we're gonna invade Iraq, and they're like, they shall feel the sword of Allah upon their neck. You know, it's like no, they won't. Nope. They're going to light you up with A-10s. Yeah. That's the way we're going to do it with a bunch of technology. But it's like, that guy's weak or that guy's soft. And it'd be nice if we could kind of get them on board with that thing. But I, I feel like the, the the worse and more rogue a nation is, the more primal they mm-hmm. are. And the more it just comes down to, I could kick Kamala Harris's ass. <laughs> Why can't I go into Ukraine? Who do you think would be the most badass Leader. World leader, like somebody you would not want to get in a fist. I would with. say the mayor of Kiev, which happens oh, yeah. to be Klitschko. Klitschko, but I'm talking about a, I'm talking about a whole country. Uh, I I used to say I find the tape. I used to say to Alec Baldwin, "You got to put on 30 pounds." He did. He, he listened. listened. Yeah, you got to grow a big beard. Kind of kind of listen, and you have to put on a three piece suit with a with a 
with a pocket, pocket watch, watch. Mm-hmm. and you just have to come in and go, mm-hmm. I said good day. You know, I'm just be this big blustery Roosevelt bellowing, type right. bellowing guy and that'll instill fear into all the horrible nations. Yeah. And that he was 25 years ago. Yeah, but ago. you could kick Roosevelt's ass, just push his wheelchair down the stairs, Wheel. right? Yeah. Different, oh, different, different, different Sorry, done. different one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the but other I'm one. saying, I don't know if there's any world leader out there, because they all talk tough, but yeah. none of them look tough. Like, That's true. Like, you could kick the shit out of Trump. Like, he, you know, you could kick the shit out. Putin, they say Putin's a tough guy. He's not a big guy. Like, he's, when he takes his shirt off, well, he's not a muscular guy. Hopefully, he Herschel does. Walker gets into Congress. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, Trudeau, the Canada guy. He's in pretty oh, good sure. shape. <laughs> he's in good shape, Yeah. Right? Yeah, but he messed up his hair. He's going to be very upset. All right. William Hurt, some very interesting William Hurt news that maybe mm. you guys knew, uh, but I, I certainly didn't. He, you know, Kiss of the Spider Woman, Big Chill broadcast news. He has died. He was 71. Uh, the cause of his death, um, shared by the family, not shared by the family, um, but he was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2018. And I saw all these tributes coming out, and then I saw on Twitter a woman put out, like, don't forget the guy you're saying all these wonderful things about, like, abused Marley Matlin and raped her and beat her. And I was like, what? So I looked into that, and she wrote a book in the 80s. And New York Post had a whole thing about it. Um, when asked about his death, she did say, you know, he was one of a kind. He was a brilliant ask- actor. We've lost a great actor. Um, they met on the set of Children uh, of a Lesser God. She was 19. He was 35. They immediately started dating, I guess. And several years after they split, the actress put in her 2009 memoir called I'll Scream Later that she was subjected to abuse throughout the relationship. She accused her of raping and beating her after coming home drunk, also berating her in the car after she went in Oscar for children. You can't parade he someone who can't hear. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, All they do is see your hands flying around gesturing. and spittle coming out. They don't know if you're talking to some guy who cuts you off on the road. Yeah, or you make it, a good point. It's toward you. Sure. You just, you, you can't. I mean, I guess if you're keeping your interpreter honest, you'd find out mm-hmm. eventually. Wow. Does, he, does the interpreter have to read the audio book? Oh, that's a good question. Mm, he does. Um, so in a statement released at the time, Hurt didn't deny the allegations, but he did say, you know, we, we all are at fault here. And, I, you know, I apologize for any hurt I caused, hurt. pun intended. I think there was some substance abuse that he he admitted to. It was mm. like, listen, I did things I'm not proud of. I read this after the fact, of course. So it's a dark chapter in his history. He he's been accused by more than just her. There's oh, been other tell. women in his life. Well, I, I read a story. I read a thing in the New York Times in Obit, and they said, you know, he had a bit of a problematic history. With, oh boy, with women and substance abuse and really, because so weird. You see an entertainer that's <laughs> fucked up. His, Normally, there's his such. character was always so Milk woke toast. and cool. subtle yeah. and yeah. friendly and measured. Yeah. And well, I guess we should have seen it coming, like Ellen. That's right. But I mean, you just I never thought of that. And also, I didn't. He was young. I mean, relatively 71. young when he died. Yeah. I I didn't yeah. I didn't know he was that young when he was doing. All those, all those, those other movies. like broadcast news, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm really curious about her book now too, because like we discovered before, she's had the same interpreter, the man, for decades. So yes. that would be very interesting. Um, oh, yeah, Dawson, you should do her audio book. <laughs> Being, give I'll us a little, this is a little chapter about uh, William Hurt raping you. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> yeah. Tell Jesus. us about William Hurt raping you. Come on, Dawson. Pass the whiskey. Getting dark in here. Come on. And then no, 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 I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa. Uh, what brought that line. in? Where did that come from? <laughs> over the line. Yeah, way over All the right. line. All right, let's move on to Bob Saget. A Florida judge has ordered the records and photos related to his death to be permanently blocked from the public. The actor and comedian's family filed this lawsuit last month asking the court to block the records, saying the release of this information would cause them to suffer irreparable harm in the form of extreme mental pain, anguish, emotional distress. The family acted quickly after some media outlets started requesting photos photos and other information gathered in the investigation because again still kind of weird and confusing and opaque um you know he was found dead in his hotel room in orlando in january death was determined to be an accident no alcohol drugs in his system still real weird but if whatever comes out will go directly to the family which which i get well the part of it that's weird is you know that was oh he hit his head you know we it's kind of interesting how incremental we are. Like he laid back and hit his head on the headboard and then, you know, bled out, right. you know, went to sleep. And they're like, 
oh, that makes sense. And then later on, it was like, no, he really hit his head. Like like the impact of falling out of a three-story building. Yeah, they were like, well, maybe he slipped and hit it on the tub or the toilet edge or something like that. And then they were like, this was either, this was consistent to the corners with being hit by baseball bat or being thrown out of a two or three-story building. And you go, so how could one slip in one's hotel room and do that? Mm-hmm. And now we're all kind of in this suspicious, you know, whatever, who'd, who'd want to put a hit on Bob Saget. So now then they go the, we're not going to release the thing. And then we all go into another strata of mm-hmm. suspicious conspiracy, whatever. Something tells me if the coroner report does come out that it was for all, for lack of a better way to say it, on the up and up, that the family would probably release that information. Yeah, my thing about like Epstein and the cameras weren't working and he killed himself in the in this prison cell, I'm like, eh, maybe there's something there. But I don't think Bob Saget had a Lolita Express or Sex Island or anything. Not any, that we ever heard, no. Nothing, and no why diary. Would the, why would the public have any right to see the photos anyway? Or well, it, it, Like if the family's got an issue, if the family's, you would think the first concern would be with yeah. the family they're going to follow every lead to find out what happened to the guy and from everything i've read they seem okay with the the way well, the cause of death has been reported that's so, the thing i think you're right so fuck off public. Exactly. you don't get to see pictures of bob saget dead yeah Come no, on. I, I, i'm okay with no i agree and it it fucks people up because remember a, uh remember several years ago Demi Moore's assistant was yeah, calling the 911 in call. and the 911 calls are public and I don't think they should be yeah. public cuz she was like well what did she take uh some stuff Advil. she's she's foams coming out of her mouth yeah. and they're like you can't you know this is going to be public the assistant is on the phone they want to say she snorted fentanyl what what do we have to do? Yeah. But you're not you're not getting the information to the paramedics at this point. Because you're worried about it, it getting yeah. you know, damaged. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. One more, Gina. All oh, right. Speaking of that, I'm going yes. to post a picture of my uh, late uh, skin tag oh, on nice. my Instagram because yeah. I think people want to know what it looks like now, now that it's put passed, a cor- put passed it next on. To a quarter yeah. Can scale. I be family and say the family wishes that you keep this private? <laughs> I want you to know Fuck what you. happens to a skin tag. When it fucks with you for too long. Okay. Well, it becomes this shriveled up little black thing. It looks like a raisin. It's like a raisin. It's kind of like a tiny raisin. Okay. You know? Let's end this on a happy note, shall we? It turns out that Dolly Parton agrees with Adam and many mm. people when it comes to which genre genres should be involved in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I This has to be, and there's been a lot, the most tweeted story with my name tagged to it th- th- that's ever existed. You Deadline said tag. tag. Skin tag to it. Deadline reports that Dolly Parton has withdrawn her name from this year's Rock and Roll nomination, Rock Hall nomination. She wrote on social media she doesn't believe she has earned that right. She says, I really do not want the vote to be split because of me, so I must respectfully bow out. She indicated that she hopes the Rock Hall would consider her in the future if she puts out an actual rock and roll album. Um, Parton, who last week hosted the Academy of Country Music Awards, was among 17 Rock Hall nominees last month. The announcement uh, of the winners will be in May, but Dolly being St. Dolly says, I'm not a rock and roller. I don't want to split the vote. I don't want to cause any problems. Just take my name off. Well, there's a country music hall of fame, and right? I'm sure she's in it. Everyone has, look, they, they have a, God damn it. I'm pissed now. Oh, here we go. Cause I thought about motorsports. Okay. They have a motherfucking NASCAR hall of fame. They have an NHRA drag racing, like hall of fame. Everyone has, every discipline has their own hall of fame. They have a boxing hall of fame. They have a UFC hall of fame. You don't get to fucking show up with your F1 car and go, I should be in the NASCAR hall of fame. No, you shouldn't. You go find your own fucking hall of fame. It's not just everything hall of fame. It's not one size fits all hall of fame. Sugar Ray Leonard is not in the UFC boxing hall of fame. And Tito Ortiz is not in the in the boxing hall of fame. It's you have a category. Yeah. That's it. Stay in your fucking lane. I, it, two live crew shouldn't be in the rock and roll hall of fame or whoever the fucking craft work or whatever bullshit country sure. thing or rap thing. It's fucking called the rock and roll goddamn hall of fame. What if they change the name? 
Music Hall of Fame. What if they just said the popular music Hall of Fame? Would you be okay with that? Then fine, let Devo in. But Devo's not a rock and roll band, and they have no fucking business in anyone's Hall of Fame. The fucking nerd can't get laid Hall of Fame. Maybe. In the Hall of Fame? Yeah, they'd be a a (laughs) top top of the ballot. (laughs) (laughs) Well, just to to bring your point home. Or then Devo gets to get into the Country Hall of Fame. (laughs) <laughs> or two live crew should get into the country. Oh, cool, in the, great great cool in the gang should be in the country. Yeah. No, it's the country is, hall of yeah. fame, you asshole. Is two live crew in the rock and roll of fame? They may have been nominated no, at some point. Get out of well, here. Well, let me tell you who is nominated this year. Uh, Tribe Called Quest. Uh, uh, not a rock and roll. Love, Back, them, love them, but they're not rock and roll. Pat Benatar, who you've been rooting for for Good. a while. Kate Bush. Devo. No, not really. Duran Devo. Duran. Duran. Yeah. Okay. Duran. Eminem. Uh, M&M, not rock and roll. Rap. Eurythmics. Ugh. Fella uh, Cootie. Don't know who that is. Judas Priest. Uh, MC5. I felt a cootie between my <laughs> balls and my ass. And I, did I tell you about this? The I'm New sorry. York Dolls, Rage Against the New Machine. New York Dolls. Ugh. All right, Rage Lion- Against the Machine. They're, okay. That's rock and roll. They're Lionel right. Richie. No. What? Two more. Carly Simon. No. And Dionne Warwick. Dionne Warwick. <laughs> Carly Simon has written some. But she could be the songwriter songs or something. I'm whatever, sure she but is. Fine, not Dionne Warwick. Yeah, is that Do You Know the Way to Santa Fe? Mm-hmm. That's not rock and roll. San Jose, but. Santa Fe, Jose. San Jose. Whatever it's Jose. <laughs> no way, Jose. Yeah. Whatever, but I mean, that's not rock and roll. <laughs> right. Mm. That's easy listening. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Easy listening Hall of Fame, Dionne Warwick. Lionel and Richie. Lionel Richie. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. <laughs> easy Hello. listening. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's all. Fucking scattered, but I, I I would say have your own Hall of Fame. Let's not pollute it. Look look no further than motorsports. Mm-hmm. You would say, would you let John Force, who's one of the greatest drag racers, funny car guy, you know legend, Force. you know John Force, the household name. All right, put put him in the F one Hall of Fame. It's like uh, that's insane. That's not Doesn't what he did. Sense. Doesn't make any sense. Yes, the car said four wheels. That's where it ended, and he needs his own Hall of Fame. And Dolly agrees. Good for Dolly. Yeah. Dolly. All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. You ever have a skin tag? Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. All right. Now, our, let's see, you put Austin shows have been rescheduled because of some supply chain Good issue boy. with the club and the HVAC and blah, blah, blah. So that'll be rescheduled to the fall. Indianapolis coming up, Helium Comedy Club. May 6th and 7th, four live shows over there and uh, doing stand-up there and live podcasts as well. Huntington Beach, Sea Lakes, that place is fun. That'll be May 20th. We'll do a live pod there. You can uh, pre-order my book, Everything Reminds Me of Something, and you can do that on Amazon or wherever you like. And Dan Dunn, yeah. what we're drinking with Dan Dunn and friends. And also, that's going to be live, the Stand Comedy Club in NYC, Friday, March 25th. And then, of course, uh, Paul Feig with uh, the Flatch, or I should say, Welcome to Flatch. And then also, uh, Minx, two really good shows. You guys should go out and support and join. Until next time, Sam Crow for Paul Feig and Dan Dunn. Say it. Mahalo. I, I used to say, I find the tape. <clears throat> I used to say to Alec Baldwin, you got to put on 30 pounds. He, d- he, he listened. listened. Yeah. You got to grow a big beard. Kind of listen. And you have to put on a three piece suit with a, with a, with a pocket, pocket watch. watch. Mm-hmm. And you just have to come in and go, I said good day. <laughs>